I was like, no, I automatically assume that somebody's recording something. <laughs> so I, so I, so it keeps me from saying something not PC, which is rare. So, uh, okay. So how I got into this, if you haven't listened to anything that I've ever done over the last five years, uh, I got into this because I was <laughs> bored. conspiracy bored. I'm older, so I had the chance of looking at conspiracies. I grew up really, really naive on a rural island in the corner of the Northwest. And so I didn't think anyone would ever lie about anything, about anything. It was the 80s. It was like everything was shiny and wonderful. You know that that song from the Lego movie, Everything is Awesome? Yeah. Right? That was my life. It's like everything is awesome, you know, and couldn't have been happier. And then I saw JFK in the theater, uh, Oliver Stone's opus basically and with a packed house and it was like holy smokes conspiracies are real or they do happen anyway so after that i then the internet fired up some years later and got into conspiracies and i never got married or had kids so if you don't you have a lot of free time on your hands mm -hmm. and so i was in just about every rabbit hole you could think of on the internet you named it i was there until about 2014, it was like, oh, is there anything left? I think I finished the internet for real. There was a commercial about that years ago. They kind of joked about finishing the internet. But you could actually do that a long time ago. So I looked into Flat Earth. I was like, yeah, it's a piece of crap. I should be able to knock it out in a weekend. What the hell? And nine months later, I'm sitting you know, on my desk just banging my head on the computer going, why can't I solve this? Why can't I solve this? And so I decided, you know, I'm, I'm going the other way. Have you, any of you guys seen the documentary, by the way? I have. On Netflix? Yeah. Okay, well, there, there's a documentary on Netflix, and they, they at least got that part right, where I just made a series of videos and put them out on the internet and said, um, yeah, I can't prove the globe in a court of law anymore, so tell me where I went wrong. And instead of academics from wherever just shutting me down in two seconds, I had a whole bunch of people call me from all walks of life with different little twists to it and said, yeah, you're not crazy. Here's why. And that just started snowballing and snowballing and snowballing to where here we are five years and change later. And right. Just, it just took me, it took me to places I never, ever thought I, I would ever be. I mean, we did a documentary on Netflix. Uh, I did a commercial in Australia. I've been interviewed. I don't know how many times I'd lost count after I think like 300 and then, um, in fact, I did public speaking things on this in, what, seven countries last year before the, the virus thing hit and have met some amazing people. There's a whole bunch of really, really cool people that are into Flat Earth that don't want to, you know, admit it yeah. and because of the Kyrie Irving thing. And uh, so, yeah, that's what I do. So, uh, so sorry, short, short version is that I am the freshman recruiter for Flat Earth. If you get in, if you get into flat Earth as a topic, chances are you're going to run into my stuff. Uh, it's kind of like the movie Blow with the cocaine. You have like an eighty percent chance of get running into my stuff first. <laughs> and uh, I don't believe that we are living on a tiny little rock covered in water and smoke flying through space. I think we are in a building with walls and a floor and a ceiling, and it was really big. And we had nothing to do with the construction of it. And we only figured it out about 1960, and we spent a lot of money and time to keep it a secret there you go that's the, my opening thing i have variations of this but that's that's my nickel tour and i'll, I'll i can go as long as you guys want i've i got time today so what do you think the motivation is behind making uh or them saying that we are in a round earth what, what do you think the motivation oh, oh what's the motivation why keep it a secret why not tell people the the short version is that it's because of timing more than anything, meaning if you don't find out that the earth is what you, if you don't find out the true nature of the world until about 1960, it's too late to go back. It's too late to reinvent civilization, meaning civilization has already been established. The concrete has hardened. Everything's already set up. And so think about, it, I don't care what, what, meeting you're talking about if it's a builder but let's just call it an illuminati meeting right you have a big illuminati meeting about one of those long tables and it's a really dark room with spotlights and everybody's smoking cigarettes for some reason and they say okay what could go wrong right and if we tell the public in 1960 
and you say, okay, three things, really, really big, important ones. Uh, the first one would be academically. Every university in every country would have to rebuild just about every physical science you could think of. So um, uh, astronomy and astrophysics, those could just get burned to the ground and I don't even know what you do with those again. And then remaining ones, geology, hydrology, archeology, span geology, anything with anology, doesn't really matter. Those have to be retooled from the ground up. You have to rip stuff out of the libraries and if anyone goes to the libraries anymore and put new stuff back in. That's just the academic side. Economically, you'd have to shut down world markets for a couple months, if not six months, maybe longer. But the big one would be religion, which is the five major religious houses of the world. Um, Hinduism, Buddhism, Judaism, Islam, and Christianity. You're giving them all leverage against science simultaneously. And each of these groups has at least a billion people in them. <sighs> it's a nightmare waiting to happen because they're not going to stop. You know, they're, once, once you got them on the, uh, the science on the ropes with that, they're, they're never, they're never going to let up. They're going to say, oh, okay, well, let's revisit some other things. Like, I don't know, evolution and carbon dating and the big bang theory and dark matter and just go on and on and on. So between those three things, that Illuminati meeting is really, really short. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's like 10 minutes. And it's like, I think we're done here. And then everyone just gets up and, and, and leaves and goes in their private jets and that's it. So the, 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 the big reason is just timing. Civil, it's not what everyone would stand to gain from telling, you know, from, from hiding the flat earth is what they would have to lose. People are twitchy. Uh, you guys have seen the movie Men in Black and I know I'm talking to everyone here is like what, 20 years old? <laughs> everyone in one person? Okay, the blonde person in the middle, she's 24. So the men in black, there's a great line in it where it was very true. I don't know if Spielberg wrote it or somebody else, where he says that a person is smart, but people are dumb, panicky, mm. and you know it. It's what true. What's wrong with you, dude? See me reversing. Like... Uh-oh, what happened? <laughs> there's else? other people joining in on the... Uh... Oh, okay. Okay. So anyway, that, that was it. So it's it's... It's because they're afraid of what the public might do. And to be honest, and I'm one of those conspiracy people that absolutely believes in the greater good. I believe in conspiracies mostly because I, I look at the conspiracy from the other side. It's like, okay, why would they do this? And if I agree with it, if, it, if it, it's for the greater good, you know, the needs of the many type thing, I mean, like, oh, okay. And yeah, 1960, no one was ready. Not even close. You couldn't tell the public in 1960. I mean, for God's sake, look what happened with... Um, Roswell in 1947 you know that was just an inkling there was no television no internet and they were just kind of hey there might be a spaceship that crashed in New Mexico and people just lost it I mean the newspapers were just freaking out because there weren't even there were barely even sci-fi shows back then so no we weren't ready in 1960 but do I think we're ready now in 2020 yeah yeah I do how's that yeah. <laughs> Thank you. That is why I won't do do shows tonight anymore. I won't do it. <laughs> all right. So what else you got? Ask me anything. Oh. All right. All, right so, all, all this without without drugs, mind you. <laughs> so a friend of mine told me to ask you how do you explain lunar eclipses? What's up? Oh, okay, lunar eclipses or solar eclipses, for that matter. In fact, that was one of my um, one of my bullet points that I used. And Hi, Jack, Hi. Who, who is that? Who are you? I'm sure. Who's the kid that's yelling on iPhone? Sorry about that. I would I would stop that. No, it's okay. Just mute. Right. <laughs> Uh, okay, so lunar eclipses or solar eclipses? Um, the one thing I love about lunar eclipses is that the eclipse shadow is too small. In fact, it's one of my bullet points. When, I, when, when people come at me and they say, give us five, five bullet points why you, you think the world is enclosed, it's flat. And I say lunar eclipses. That's, that's one of my first things I use. And it's because, so mainstream science will say that the eclipse or the, the moon is 2,000 miles wide, roughly. That's what they said. Well, that's a problem because the shadow, if you've ever sat through an uh, actual lunar eclipse, wait, lunar eclipse or solar eclipse? Both. Both. Okay. Well, we'll let's do, the, let's do the, the solar eclipse where supposedly the, um, uh, the earth, it, the moon's in front of the sun, that one. So, the, so if the moon is 2,000 miles wide, why is the eclipse shadow only 70 miles wide? That's a 97, 98% reduction in size. It's massive. 
and you and you can't replicate it down here in the world you know you're walking next to a building your shadow is either exact you know actual size or it's longer we've all seen long shadows we've all seen actually it never gets smaller your shadow doesn't turn down to like you walking the size of an action figure next to a wall it never ever happens <laughs> And people, you know, science tries to explain, it's like, no, no, it's like a magnifying lens only with shadows and it, it condenses it down. And it's like, okay, if you're gonna go down that road, then the same has to apply on the earth side. So if the earth is in front of the sun, the earth is supposedly 8,000 miles wide. Why don't we see a 240, 250 mile wide blackout zone on the moon? The, earth, the moon should turn into a giant eyeball at least once a month and it doesn't, why not? and no one, will, no one will touch it. We always see, you know, waxing and waning crescents and, you know, new moons and stuff like that and the occasional blood moon, but we never see, you know, that magnifying glass shadow on the moon. Or I'm sorry, on the, yeah, on the moon. We, we just don't see it. It's, it's one, of, one, of, one of my bullet points. Does that kind of help, kind of? Yeah, yeah I mean, I'll, I'll let them know. How, how do you explain uh, using a compass on a flight? Compass, great one. Okay, so, and I don't have my, toys in front of me uh so magnetic north doesn't change so we're, we're talking about if forget about the the building for now we'll just talk about the ground which would be basically a dinner plate inside of a cake box you know because it's going to have some sort of squared off edges because uh whoever built engineering wise you never want to have rounded off edges you want to have squared off ex edges um so the middle of it so the center of it that would be the north pole and magnetically, that doesn't change, actually. That doesn't, that doesn't vary at all. So the compass will work, and, but it always dominates north. So when you're going wherever you are, the compass works just fine. In fact, the, the compass works almost identical globe versus flat. You know, it still points north, and you know, as you're flying or driving or taking a train or whatever, it still will dominate north. What's interesting about a compass, and you guys can look this up, it's really fun. None of this is secret information, is that the compass never dominates south. In fact, you can, the, in fact, it's one of those kids, school, cool um, school kids thing that they ask people in Antarctica. It's like, what's a compass doing in Antarctica? It doesn't do a damn thing. It just sits there. It just kind of wobbles around. At some point, you remember, this is a north and south pole, globey type thing. Eventually, the, the south pole, magnetic south, should dominate. And I have talked to a whole bunch of people, including military guys that are down in uh, New Zealand and Chile and Australia, that say, yeah, there is no magnetic south. It's a freaking myth that the South Pole that they take you to, oh yeah, they'll take you to it. It doesn't do anything magnetically. So why is that? Well, because there's only one magnetic. It's magnetic north. Mm. Ta-da. Mm -hmm. There you go. And again, you can, you can have, I mean, I'd, I, if I had enough time, I could dig up some fun videos on it. But it should go the other way. But it, it's great because it's, it's kind of like an illusion where people think, they, they don't even think because most of the population lives in supposedly the Northern Hemisphere. So hardly anyone asks questions of what's happening in the, in the Southern Hemisphere, be it um, uh, South America or Africa or Australia. Almost everything, all the relevant stuff's in the North. So we, we don't ever pay attention to the South. We just don't care. And it's a, it's a great little thing that we overlook. We can't see the forest for the trees. And how do you explain um, how, like, if you're up north and yeah. you're put up, anyone can do this. They can take a camera, they can point you up, and then just fast forward throughout the night, and they can see the stars moving in a circular, you know, circle, like they're spinning. And then if <laughs> you're on the, 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 like, I guess the equator, then you can see the stars just going that way. And then if yep. you're south, it's spinning in a different, it, it's spinning in a different direction. Right. If, on a flat earth how would that work okay on it's gonna be you know it won't be too tough too tough to explain because you guys look like you occasionally play the game a game from time to time day will you guys play like fortnite or gta or <laughs> minecraft <laughs> anything like that i mean I, I was a big warcraft person i hate fortnite i hate the other stuff just because it's too shiny I, but it doesn't really matter so in those in simul all right, let's preface it with this. First off, everything in the sky is just lights in the sky. They're part of a giant, very, very pretty, very, very ornate clock system that predates language. That's all it is. That's all that's up there. However, that being said, the common misconception is it's exactly like a clock and everything in the Northern Hemisphere has to be the same in the Southern Hemisphere because you're looking at exactly, everyone's looking at exactly the same thing. 
So for example, if I went down to Australia and I said, I called you on the phone and I said, Hey, I'm looking at the belt of Orion. And you say, Hey, I'm looking at the belt of Orion too. We'll just use this for example. It doesn't really matter where in the sky. Cause some people say, well, you can't see it. It doesn't matter. You, you and I are both thinking that we're seeing the same belt of Orion. But in a system like this, you wouldn't necessarily do that. It would be instanced if you know software, meaning it would be, you are looking at regional versions of Orion, meaning you're saying, in fact, the, the great example of this would be, oh yeah, my belt of Orion, the middle star is blue. And I say, oh, in my belt of Orion, the middle star is red. Who's right? Well, you both could be right because you would just use dual projection systems, which is what we do in simulations, which is what I talked about in the book. If it is, if it is flat and it is enclosed, chances are you're living in some sort of virtual realm. I mean, I, the only reason I start off with flat world is because that is the easiest thing for the general public to understand. They remember the matrix is what, 20 years old now? A lot of people didn't get it. I mean, it was cool and all, but they, they didn't get the concept and that is, a virtual world is very, very, very possible. And your best scientists out there, best physicists and astrophysicists, oh yeah, it absolutely could be digital. Why not? And that, that kind of help, kind of? So basically, short, short version, you were looking at dual, double projections of the same thing, only reversed, which is what we do in software. And in software, it's called the, um, uh, the Skybox system. You can look that up anywhere, it's what we do. When, when you look at the sky, when you're in GTA, it's everything. In fact, it's not even, it's not even a dome. It's, it's literally a box because computers don't know how to draw circles, which is why pixels are squares. Everything has to be right angles. If you zoom in on, of course, anything, you know, it, any text, it, it's all ends up being right angles. Sorry. I get off and no. bring me back. If I go off too far in the weeds, please just like flag me down, please. And when Tim actually brought this subject up to me, I found it interesting. I was like, hmm, interesting. And I wasn't like right off the bat, I'm like, you're crazy. I was just like, okay, let me check this out. And I started, uh, uh, you know, looking into it and then looking into videos. And then my only question was, I'm like, okay, so who built the dome? Like that. Are you going to jump to that question right away? Really? Why don't you just ask me God's phone number while you're at it? I know I can, I can answer it though for you if you want me to. Yeah. That's, Not the phone number, that's, that's what came to mind. I'm like, I'm like so who built the dome and, and, and why? Okay. All right, let's, let's jump right all quick. We're going to go fast forward. Why not? We'll, we'll come back on the little stuff. All right. Who built it and why? All right. <clears throat> First off, it wasn't us. It has nothing to do with us. We had nothing. There's a great line and I do pop culture references more than the kid in Spider-Man, um, which is, uh, the, the old movie, you remember that old movie Contact with Jodie Foster? How's that movie? Okay, great line in that movie where she says, she says, did you build this, right? And the guy, the alien that looks like her father says, um, we didn't build it. We don't know who did. One of the most humbling lines I've ever, I've ever heard. So first off, got to get that out of the way. We had nothing to do with this. We didn't build it. Um, as far as who built it, you can really only go down one of two roads. One is an advanced civilization that's much older and wiser and more powerful than ourselves, or the divine, depending on your faith, we'll go with the Christian side, Santa Claus on a Sunday in his bathrobe. You know, one, one of those. But really at that point, you're kind of just splitting hairs because one man's advanced civilization is another man's deity. So as far as who, yeah, definitely someone who has way more engineering skills than us, but come on, can that be that much of a stretch? If you showed a, what, a, an atomic submarine to someone even a hundred years ago, they would just look at you like you were a Greek god. So that, that would be, that would be the who, and a, some, a, a group or a being way beyond us. No question. Um, now, as far as the why, that's where it gets more intriguing. Because the why, and I've, I have believed this for a very, very long time, only because I have a lot of free time on my hands, which is if you look at this world closely enough and you look at the systems that are involved, you start realizing something. There's a consistent thread that runs through everything in this world. And I'm not talking about the force or some weird th or quantum me mechanics or quantum entanglement or anything like that. It's conflict. Very, very simple. 
which is it doesn't matter how beautiful, how powerful, how rich, how talented you are. In this world, you always have something to complain about. Always. I mean, again, if you're a billionaire, you're worried about money. If you're a model, you're staring in the mirror every hour, every day, waiting for a wrinkle to happen. If you're, you know, power is power and so on and so on. So if that's the case, if this world is 99% conflict, which means it's almost inescapable, even if you were a monk sitting, you know, chanting on your hands and knees in the Himalayas, you're still going to have to deal with mortality. You can't escape it, right? You can say you're content all you want, but there's still something going to be creeping around the edges. Then I believe that everything outside of this world would be 99% unlimited meaning an unlimited universe. Me, if you want to call it, you know, heaven, Shambhala, Nirvana, what, what, whatever Asgard version is, you know, all that stuff. Yeah, probably 99% uh, unlimited. Now this, again, where it gets kind of fun. You're saying, okay, well, why, why build this place? Okay, think about this. I'll give you the, this will be something you guys can talk about offline. Oh, what are we drinking, by the way? We got beer in one hand and wine in the other. Wow. And the Corona light. <laughs> Everyone's got Nice. Is every is everybody drinking? I um uh, I raised my hand. I, I want to ask a question. Wait, 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 wait. I'll I'll get to you in a second. Well, let me finish this one thing. So hang hang tough. Who are you, by the way? Felipe. Hey, nice to, nice to see you, man. Nice to meet you. All right. So okay. So re real real fast. If I'll give you the genie thing, and you guys can talk about this offline. Let's say a genie comes to you and you are, um, you know, he says, I'll give you three wishes, right? You know, rub the lamp, three wishes. And of course you're clever. So you think, oh, one of my wishes is going to be a million wishes. Like, okay, here we go. So no one makes it to a million wishes, by the way. They never make it. So you start going through your wishes, just about everything you could do, right? You know, you're immortal, you're super powered, you get to have sex with every celebrity you ever want to have sex with, you're a billion dollars, blah, 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 fleet of jets, and you're being fanned with some rare ostrich endangered feathers. I know it's not completely PC, but you get what I mean. You can do anything you want. And you go through wish after wish after wish after wish. And finally, you start running out of ideas. You start running out of novelty, for lack of a better word. Look up a guy named Terrence McKenna. He believed that the universe ran on novelty, and I absolutely believe that. Which was something we say to each other all the time. What's new? What's happening? What's new? Right? Everyone wants something new. I mean, we're, uh, people are going nuts right now trying to find entertainment that they haven't seen, for example. So you keep going to this genie, and finally you literally run out of ideas, and you, you ask this genie, say, hey, um, I'm tapped out. What do, I, what do you got? Can you help me out? He goes, yeah. Yeah, I got something for you. You're not going to like it very much, but I got something for you. Really? What is it? Okay. I'm going to send you to this place. Limited lifespan, a million ways to die, all sorts of suffering. It's going to be awful. It's like, wow, it doesn't sound like fun at all. It's like, yeah. But when you come out of it, you are going to appreciate this whole unlimited thing like it's brand new. And it's going to be really, really great. And the guy, you know, you say, okay, what's the catch? Well, the catch is you're not even going to remember asking me this question. And he snaps his fingers, and here you are in this place, this place of conflict. And that is the rub in that you can't have your cake and eat it too, or eat your cake and have it too, depending on which, one, which version you like. Meaning you can't be here and remember where you came from. Because if you did, you'd bail. Everyone would. It's like, you know, first, first sign of trouble. People would be like, oh, this place sucks. Give me a bridge to jump off of. So that's the catch. You live here as long as you can. You learn something. It's more like a school than anything else. And then when you're done, you go back. And it's cyclical. So there's your reason why it was built, in my opinion. And I stick by it. Cool. Sorry, so who was it? Felipe? Sorry, that had a question. How many yeah. people now, how, where, how did all these people get involved? Kevin, I don't even know who you are, so that's fine. Who's on, who's, who's on iPhone, by the way? Uh, this is James. What's up? Hi, James. Hi, how are you? Good, good. All right, good. Felipe, hit me. So my question, I have two questions based on, like, movement. So, like, I mean, 
Pangea existed at one point. Do you believe that? Oh, absolutely. How could how could I not believe in Pangea? I mean, South right. America absolutely jams into the side of Africa. Yeah. No question. Every kid's thought about this since forever. So, yes. So, as far as, like, explaining the edges of, of the uh, flat earth, yeah. what stops it from, like, what stops the bodies of water from being oh, perfect. pulled down? Okay, perfect, perfect. Okay, two, well, there's a couple things we could go with there. Uh, first off, for those people who don't know what, what Pangea is, that is the supercontinent theory that in initial, initially, which would go along with earlier versions of this world, that we started out as just one big giant blob landmass, and that during the terraforming or whatever you want to call it between civilizations, the landmasses were, were spread out, if you believe in the flat earth theory. When it comes to, you want to look at some cool stuff though. So the land, and by the way, if we're talking about a, a flat enclosed world, it's also not, not rotating in any way, shape or form. If you guys look up the Mercator map, which is what they use most often, you know, that's the one in the classroom, you know, where Greenland's way, way too big and, and stuff like that. Um, what's interesting, if you look at that, is all the pointy bits, you know, like Italy and, the, you know, um, Cabo San Lucas, that, that the Baja Strip and all the, the pointy bits point down. They all point south, which is statistically <laughs> impossible. But in a flat world, they all point out which I think is very, very interesting. When it comes to why, how the water is in here, um, we are living in, okay. I know you're, you'll probably have to catch up a little bit. We are living in a building and inside that building is basically a giant saltwater lake, which is us. And on the edges, Antarctica is the most unique continent of all, which is not only is it a 200 foot wall of ice, you know, as the coastline for most of it, but it goes up really, really quickly. Most know, people don't know that, that all of Antarctica, at least even what science says, is a plateau at about 14,000 feet. That water is not going anywhere. You could, you could send tsunamis at the Antarctic coastline all day long. They are not going anywhere. Um, so it, that's why it's also unlivable. Altitude kickness, sickness kicks in at about 7,000, about half that. So yeah. the Antarctic is just this giant, giant bathtub ring that surrounds the whole outside of us. That kind of help? Yeah, also, uh, what hey, is like, do you have a microphone on your on your thing there? No, no, I'm at, I'm actually at work. Oh, uh, okay, cool. So, my other question is, uh, what is the rotation of the flat earth and how does it move as far as like uh, moving into seasons and uh, temperature differences between the uh, regions below the equator? Perfect, like, basically, perfect. like, what. What affects that every year or annually, yep. or, or is, or is like, three hundred and sixty-five days applied to flat earthers, or does that apply at all? No, it, you it, believe uh, three hundred and sixty-five years. I mean, no, it's days. Three hundred sixty-five days in a year. Yeah, that applies. Good question, by the way. Hardly anyone ever asked that. The, as far as the seasons go, though, it's not the rotation of the structure itself. It is the sun and the moon. We'll just use the sun. Uh, the sun going above us, and I know I'm dating myself because you guys probably don't know, own any records or vinyl, but it's like a needle on a record player. So a needle on a record player, as you know, doesn't stay in the same groove. You know, it, it's not in the same place every time. It moves in as the song plays, and if you reverse it, it goes out. And so when it comes to the seasons, yeah, the sun is not on the same path. And I think it also speeds up and slows down depending on, you know, what arc it is, obviously, if it's going on an inner path versus outer path. Um, also things that could affect the seasons. I also don't think the, the sun is the only heat source in this place. Um, the upper jet stream, core. sorry, what? The core and the currents. Eh, well, yeah, 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 yeah. The, uh, the core, well, the core of the earth, eh, which is different for us a little bit. Yeah. The magma system generates heat, the underwater conveyor system, which is the currents oh, that generates creates a huge amount of en energy. So remember most of the world is water. So the, most of the energy transfer is through the water anything else um the jet stream up above which is going at a couple hundred miles an hour depending on where you are between all those things sure i mean that's you could you could create the seasons very very easily it what what i'm trying to lean on kind of with the moon is you don't have to the the brunt of the responsibility isn't just for the sun because the sun is very very small in in our universe which goes along with the, the eclipse question that was earlier which is the sun shadow on the eclipse is only about 70 miles wide, which is great because we say the sun is less than 50 miles wide, 
which is why also might be a follow-up question. People say, well, why isn't daylight all the time? Because you always see the, the diagrams and the sun is really huge and it's like a big light bulb above everything. It's like the diagrams have to be that big because in our model, the sun is so small, it wouldn't be, it, you couldn't even draw it. It'd be so tiny <laughs> by comparison. Most of the sun models you see on, on diagrams, if you like Googled flat earth would be like a thousand miles wide, which we don't adhere to. There you go. Now, as far as, uh, you know, you, you had uh, mentioned the squares and the video games like GTA and stuff yeah. like, you know, cells and molecules and, and when things fall in terms of liquid, they're, they're all round. Yes. Gravity. So, the, nope. That's, that's a good question because you're, I know where you're going, which is what is gravity, right? In in a flat earth model. Huh. All right. Gravity and anyone that watched the videos, uh, the, they'll know that that it, in fact Neil deGrasse Tyson, the world's most famous scientist, and I can say his name. I I know he's called he sh who shall not be named in the in the documentary, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> um, which is gravity is the same thing, basically the same thing for us that it is in the globe world. So if you ask any scientist, they will say we can't tell you what gravity is. We can only tell you what it does. We can only tell you the symptoms of it. We can't, we can't replicate it ourselves when no one, well, except maybe the military and they're not talking, can create an anti-gravity thing. You know, no one can, no one can create a gravity machine. So they, they can't replicate it. So what about heart? <laughs> ah, I see. Nice. Very good. Harp of oh, harp is one of those. So what's well, so new by comparison, I think harp is a, exercise and trying to break out of this place i think that initially they like with anything you know if you if we'll, we'll go with the men right because only men would do this yeah, well right. before you carry on i'm sorry can you just explain to them what harp is oh harp uh high altitude research project otherwise known as high frequency ray waves also known as potentially using not only modifying weather but being able to use weather as a weapon that was, that was the, the initial goal or maybe the side effect goal. I think initially using field harmonics was a way to potentially breach the dome. Meaning, okay, so if you find out that we're living in some sort of building, right, and you finally reach the outer marker, what's the first <clears> thing <throat> a guy's going to do? You know, men just like, get the cannon, you know, and they're just going to start trying to punch through it, and that didn't work. So it's like, okay, what do we got? Atomic weapons? Sure. Hammer it with atomic weapons for four years straight, which is almost on public record and they just literally all the atomic tests for four years were just straight up which is such a smart idea trying to break through and then uh they create harp it's like okay let's let's hit it with frequency modulation maybe sure my why not and then you hit it with cern which is kind of a cheat in my opinion which is okay maybe we can like create a stargate to go through it <laughs> and we can just bypass the whole thing it's like wow that's not bad now, you know, there's all sorts of people that said, you know, they disastrous. The what? I said it's fucking disastrous. I know. I know. I know. Well, hell, if you want to, there's, there was a movie that touched upon that, which um, I don't even think Stephen King knew when he wrote it, uh, which was called The Mist, which was, you know, you open up, you know, people think, you know, the Stargate series. And it's like, well, if you open up an actual interdimensional portal, you have no idea what the hell is going to come through there. It could be awful. <laughs> and that's what that's what the, he kind of touched upon. You know, this whole the whole northeastern corner of the United States was getting eaten alive by freaky reptiles. Anyway, so um, yeah, so CERN, yeah, might be an attempt. Would be why not? Why not try? I mean, that would be a great goal for any government. It's like what can you know, if you can get past this, you know, it's it's like discovering a new world in their opinion. It, and you say, well, you know, maybe they wouldn't do that for moral or ethical reasons. Like, come on. There's a great story. Uh, you can look it up where there were some scientists when they were touching off the first atomic weapon that theorized that they were going to ignite the oxygen in the atmosphere and basically burn off, you know, burn off the entire atmosphere with the first blast, you know, start a chain reaction. And the response was from the other guys is like, well, if it happens, we're not going to get in trouble. <laughs> for it so it's like okay and they did they pulled the switch anyway and you know science does things not because they should but because they can hey yeah. any questions and yes. uh, actually in one of the interviews that i saw of you um they asked you uh do you have we been out to space 
And your response was, no, we haven't. Then I'll just- Hell no, we haven't. In fact, do we have a chat room? I, I will drop a thing in the box for you real fast. So my- you guys can, Go ahead. So my other, my, no. other, my other question with that is, is that what about other um, uh, flat earthers who uh, compare and bring up that, uh, that, that subject about when they're showing, when NASA is showing a video and they're talking about using a, a fishbowl. So how can they use a, if, if we haven't been out to, to space, then right. how could they use or, or say that this picture that NASA took, they're using a fishbowl lens. When oh, yeah, yeah. How, how when, when, in fact, we haven't been out. So how can they use that as proof to debunk that the world is round if they don't even believe in it to begin with? Yeah, well, it's a good point. Um, when it comes in, I mean, I could spend a whole day talking about NASA. And I just dropped in one of the Apollo photos for, for, for reference. Um, when it comes to the fisheye lens stuff, uh, the fisheye lens, for those who don't know photography, is the simple version would be the peephole lens. If anyone has a peephole in their door, you know full well when you look outside, your hallway isn't curved massively. It's a straight hallway. But looking through that lens, that's not what you see. Um, a fisheye lens is a brilliant way to exaggerate any sort of curve from just about any altitude. The, the, the best one being that um, the, the short answer to your version is hypocrisy. <laughs> They just they just make it up as they go along, and it's such a big organization. Most of the time, they don't even know what the left hand doesn't know what the right hand is doing. And but the red page when it comes to flat earth, the what? So not everyone is on the same page when it comes to flat earth. No, 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 Some no. believe that yes, we have been out to space. Uh, no, there's no dome. Or... Well, so the, the the definition is okay. Okay, yeah, you're right. Let's back up a little bit. So seventy percent of the community, and again, this is in the documentary. Uh, they got some things right, which was that 70% of the community believes we're in a dome. We're in some sort of snow globe. You know, just pick any snow globe, that's where we're in. Some, that's, that's all it is. Uh, the other 30% believe that it's flat, but there is no dome. And they still don't believe in outer space necessarily, but they don't because space is relative. Meaning, are you in outer space when you're at 80,000 feet, when you're at 100,000 feet, when you're at 130,000 feet, and so on and so on. Um, the Red Bull Jump, a great example of that um, by Felix Bumgarner. You can look up the, the wonderful images on that, was... Uh, which I loved, you know, the Neil deGrasse Tyson. In fact, anyone that, that thinks they saw the curves from the airplane, I can, I can play it for you. You can play it yourself. The, a great video that's on my channel um, where Neil Tyson goes on stage and he's talking at a convention a couple of years ago, right after that jump. And he said that it was scientifically dishonest because he said, you can't see the curvature from 130,000 feet. But because of the fisheye, and you want to call it a fishbowl, that's fine. Fisheye lens... It was very, very exaggerated. No, I don't care. Fishbowl, who cares? I mean, it's actually not, not, he's not wrong. So may, um, I may use that in future things. So it, because of the, the, because of the fisheye lens, it was a severe curvature. I mean, it was a massive curvature. It looked like, in fact, we did it to where if that was true, he wouldn't be at 130,000 feet. He would be at 400 miles at least, maybe even, maybe even further. And so he called him out on it and said, no, you can't see the curvature from 130,000 feet. This goes into, you know, anyone that's ever said, you know, when anyone ever emails me and say, oh, I've seen a curve from an airplane. And I send him that, that video. And I say, okay, so Neil's, Neil's wrong. But I'm not trying to yell at the people when, they, when someone says that. If you think you see it from an airplane, that's what it is. You, it's not that you see it. It's that you want to see it. Meaning, um, if anyone's ever read George Orwell, 1984, it's a, there's a great example of this. is the whole five lights versus four lights conditioning torture thing, which is if you repeat something over and over and over and over and over and over again, CIA conditioning, you know, or whatever alphabet group conditioning, eventually you're going to start seeing it. You, because your mind just, just caves in after a while. It's, again, it's not that you see the curvature, you want to see the curvature. And so that's why I put the challenge out there well, three and a half years ago where I said, okay, you think you see the curve? Fine. Take a picture with your phone or whatever, and then hold it up to a laptop and hold a straight edge up to it. Straight edge. 
straight edge. And tell me if that curve is still there. If it is, you can email it to me and I'll quit <laughs> tomorrow. I will burn down the YouTube channel. I will, I will shut everything down. No one's ever sent me anything because they can't. Now it's still frustrating. I don't get emails saying, oh, I guess I didn't see it. And I don't get that sort of satisfaction. But that's, I mean, remember, I've had people say they've seen it from an airplane, from a balloon, from a mountaintop, even the beach, you know, side to side. I can see it from the beach. Like, you can? It's like, yeah, it's like, because Neil deGrasse Tyson, that guy over there, he says you can't. And he said no civilian will be able to, which is also a nice little tap to uh, the powers that be, which is people forget that out of the 500 people that even have claimed to be in space, 99% of them were military. They're all, they're all not only military, they're military officers. All the Americans are Air Force, usually colonels or higher. Which, which, all right. My next question, I'm sorry if anybody else has a question. No, no, no. But yeah, I'll make time for you guys. Why not? Like, that's the thing. I'm like, I just can't imagine such a secret, especially with Trump being- can't keep a secret. Nope. I'm like, I can't imagine <laughs> such a secret, staying a secret, with, uh, uh, among all these world leaders. Yeah. I mean, I remember I'm like, you want me to tell them? Go ahead. If you don't give me this, I'm going to tell them. I'm like, I can. I just can't imagine. No, no, no. I got you. I got you. Which is, it's a, it's a common question, but I, I've found different ways to answer it, which is, okay, it's such a big secret, you'd never be able to keep it. Ben Franklin, famous quote where he said, you want to know how to keep a secret between three people? You kill two of them. That's the only way you can do it. Um, when it comes, in fact, um, so the Manhattan Project, uh, I'll use that as an example, but I don't like it very much, but, it, but, it's, but it's the most common one used, which is the building the atomic bomb. We had hundreds of thousands of people in the United States refining uranium in, in three different locations, Tennessee and Washington, and I'll die a happy man if I can remember the third. And ne it never got out. The atomic bomb never, ever was disclosed to anyone, mostly because of compartmentalization, meaning if you're refining a metal, you don't know what it's for. Right. You just keep, you know, the, the what's the saying in the spy movies, right? It's above your pay grade. Right. You, you send assassins out. You don't tell them why they're shooting the guy at the hotel. You just tell them to shoot the guy at the hotel. They don't get to know the political backstory and the intrigue and everything that makes the movie. So when it comes to keeping a secret like this, though, it's so big that you don't tell. What am I missing? What is she doing? Oh, I was putting another light on. Oh, OK. Um, you don't tell people, you tell as, vi as few people as possible because there's no reason, oh, that's better. Uh, there's no reason to tell them, meaning a uh, need to know basis, which is straight up military. Does Trump need to know? Why in the hell would you tell Trump? Trump <laughs> makes, as, as, as the president, he makes what, $400,000 a year? He's a figurehead. He doesn't get to, remember, we convinced the American public for decades that the president literally had a guy walking next to him with a briefcase that he could open up and just push the button and all the missiles would fly. No, no, the president is his own press secretary. Um, does Neil deGrasse Tyson need to know? No, no, you want most of these people acting naturally because you want them doing, you want them spinning the media as best they can. You don't tell them. Now with astronauts, we learned this because of the astronauts. Great example. So you, we told, in my opinion, we told the Apollo guys, right? We told them, no, okay, you're going to be faking this. Here's why you're faking it. They probably shouldn't have told them the why. How? That's easy, right? It's okay. It's a military operation. You do this. But if you tell them why, it weighs on you. It's a very, very big thing. Like you're saying, my God, it's a secret that everyone would want to tell, right? So you're never going to believe this. They wouldn't be able to keep it inside them. And with the astronauts, with military guys, it's really, really tough because they're under um, different laws than we are. They're under the whole treason thing. They don't get to go to court. <laughs> you know, they're put in as like, you know, in some cases, you know, they're locked away in a room. They throw away the room type scenario. So the, the Apollo guys, they just turn into basket cases afterwards, especially the guilt. Oh, my God. Having the, the parades <laughs> you know, for doing jack. And they, you know, they, they turned to the bottle. They didn't do press conferences. Uh, Neil Armstrong was just dying to tell people. He was giving cryptic messages. So afterward, they learn from their mistakes. I will give that to them. Uh, they decide, okay, we're just going to have people do stuff and not tell them why. So, you know, all the modern astronauts, it's like, okay, you're going to go up. You're going to do, if you even go up, you're going to do this, this, and this. And that's it. You don't get to know anything else. You don't even get to ask why. 
So I'll give you one more example real fast, which is, it's an old movie called um, Capricorn One. Great movie. Independent film of uh, 1978 about faking a Mars mission. Never get to make that movie today. It's a great independent film. Hell, O.J. Simpson was one of the astronauts. Super weird before he started killing people. So he goes, um, is that PC? Can I say that? So he, um, they, they make a fa fake Mars mission. And the only people that knew in NASA, the only guys that knew were the telemetry guys. Meaning you can have 99% of NASA not knowing anything. You know, they make the fuel systems and they polish this and they do HR and they mop the floors and crap. But the guys that do telemetry, meaning when a rocket, the, the, the old, we'll just say GPS for a rocket is the telemetry, which when it goes out of eyesight range, someone's got to tell you where the rocket is. Well, telemetry guys can make up anything they want. And that's what they do. They tell you, oh, it's here and it's here. Those guys have to know. But again, all you have to do is do what psychological profile on those guys. Don't, don't forget that as far as keeping secrets <laughs> in the government and stuff like that, they monitor everybody and it's just gotten worse and worse over time. So like the telemetry guys, you'd monitor their emails, their phones, their GPS. You would know exactly, you'd do a psychological profile. You'd know exactly when they were starting to crack. And if one of them even made an email saying, dude, I got something to tell you. We'll meet at a bar. No, that's it. That guy's gone. He is toast. Sorry, a little dark, but whatever. <laughs> no, it, it makes it makes total sense. So there is yeah. communication between someone outside the dome and someone inside the dome who kind of. Uh, do I think there's communication? Well, if you're going to do that, you might as well ask me if there's aliens. Um, oh, do well, I think? And it goes with that when it goes to the building, the and then it's way beyond yeah. us. But yeah. my 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 uh, my. Is my, there anyone? Is there? Are we? Is anyone here working with the builders? I would think so. I would think there'd be really, really limited communication. All those stories you've ever heard about alien stuff and alien meetings and all that. Do I think that aliens exist? Sure. Do I think they're from Mars, Jupiter, and Venus? No. Do I think they're just older versions of us or the superintendents of this building or the janitors or whoever? Yeah, probably. Um, are they trapped in here with us or do they get to come and go freely? Unknown, ignore that phone. That is my agency calling saying, don't tell them so much. So, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm not from the government. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously, stay exactly where you are. Yeah. Where, where, I'm trying to go, where I'm trying to go with it is that why let us, like, if they don't want us to reach the dome or reach the, 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 uh, the outer marker. Yeah, the outer mind. Uh, uh, why even allow us to even get the technology to even just shoot up into it? Because I've got. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Excellent, excellent point. I think it, you got good questions. You, did you even write these questions down or are you just winging them? <laughs> these questions are just dudes and driving crazy. And I that is good. Okay, yeah. Why? Why? It's not It's not that they have to. Stranger, uh, one, one more thing. Uh, um, Mark, 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 Sergeant. Sergeant. Mark. Mark. Uh, sorry, sorry. Mark, done a few things. Flatter. Um, and then, uh. and then also kids who are just like, um, like, uh, like I want to be an astronaut. And then they they do all this because I I took science, you know, I did experiments, and I got excited. I love science. I love I follow the Mayans and and how they you know the, their calendar, and then how and I've done history and like these are things that I that that. So when he like brought me into it, I'm like I like. Okay. <laughs> you know, I'm like, wow. And I'm like, I, so I had a hard time kind of like uh, 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 trying to process it and right. kind of like how it would work on a flat earth. You Every, know? Everyone, everyone does, by the way. Everybody has a tough time uh, dealing with it. Um, some, some can get through it quicker than, than others. Um, the average time is about two weeks. I took nine months. Other people, it really varies. The fastest I've ever seen was a woman. She did it in 20 minutes blew me away she she was an uber driver that that anyway so sorry let me get back to your first thing which is my question uh so if we're in a cage yeah and there's someone monitoring us right why would they let us get the technology to reach the dome or get to the dome or even dream about getting out there you know what i mean it's like yeah. <laughs> 
it's, it's like because I imagine that that if they if they have if they have if they have, if they have this if they have this technology that they would want to keep us in the dark. Are well, you- yeah, yes and no. Um, every civilization, if you know full well, we're not the first people to rent this apartment. Not even close. Um, the old, there's old civilizations, remnants of it have been around forever. The sunken cities off of India, sunken cities off of Japan, the Bosnian pyramids, the real pyramids, Puma Punku, just about every stone thing that they visited in ancient aliens. But to your point, I think every civilization has their day, as it were. So think about ours. We didn't really do much for the first 4,500 years. If ours goes back 5,000 years unbroken, uh, for the first 4,500 years, we didn't do that much. Maybe we did a little bit here and there, but only, we've only been really interesting for the last 500 years. And when technology got to a certain point, uh, 100 years ago, when the internal combustion engine was created, that's when things changed. Yeah. It's do you stunt the civilization and keep them stagnant forever? Nah, let them run with it. Well, you know, let them, let them keep evolving and, and evolving in, in terms of their technology to where once they get to a certain stage, again, I don't want to get too weird here, but then they graduate or don't graduate. You know what I mean? Kind of like the senior class. You don't have to get the, go home, but you got to get the hell out of here type thing because we got another class moving in. Um, that's what it kind of feels like. It does. It does feel like that. It, because it just true. in the last, I mean, like, it just, you know, where it just in my lifetime till now, like the microwave. I remember my whole family around a microwave and looking at it, making a hot dog. Oh, yeah. Like, holy oh, shit. So the beeper, the cell phone, then watching uh, Star Trek and then watching them with that whole like, boop, boop, boop. and then next year, yep. you know, we have uh, we have it. And then the yeah. tablet where it's like, uh, like everything that's played in fiction is actually real now. I, yeah, absolutely right. And I think we ran, I think we ran out, we peaked some some time ago which is why i think it's all kind of unraveling as we speak or we're in this transition period um i challenge anyone i did not to do a pop culture thing too much but the best year in movies without a question was 1999 that was 20 years ago music tapped out a long time ago books way before that we've we've run out of the the five forms of the arts which i respect so much uh 3d you know um pictures sculptures music dance and dance and literature almost all of those have been we we've done it there's nothing new under the sun there we we're rebooting after rebooting after rebooting all just about anything we can and I think civilization, whoever's running this place, yeah, like you said, I think they are doing doing the same thing we are. It's like, all right, you know, like there, no show lasts forever, right? And I think that's what they did with us. There was a wonderful South Park episode called Earth Canceled, which was so telling. I, I don't even know if they knew what they were inadvertently stepping into, which the, ali- the aliens outside the world were watching the entire world as a giant reality show. And they were finally like, yeah, your ratings have slipped too much. We're canceling you. And that, that was the whole plot of the show. Well, why, why couldn't that be actually more to the truth than, than you think? So, so, yes, you're absolutely right. Why let us get that far? Because if you don't, it just sits there in stasis. I mean, think of that. that for 4,500 years, my God, we only had wooden ships and horses. That was it. That's all we had. We couldn't, we couldn't explore. We could never find. We were never going to find the dome. That way. In fact, I, I joked about this in a couple interviews where I said, look, if you were the king of France in 1500 and you had a map, it's like, oh, wow, here's what the world really looks like. What are you going to do with it? You got nothing. And it's like, you can have all the horsemen you want. You can have all the ships you want. You're not going to do anything. And plus, let's, let's throw one, one more thing in here. 5,000 years is a long time. Think of all the l- subtle little things that were put into the design of this world to slow us down to keep us from finding it. Uh, the, one of the, the most glaring would have been um, uh, the 3% salt solution added to the, to the oceans. 3% salt solution. And you think, oh, that doesn't do much. Oh yeah, it does. Because what it does is you can't drink the water that you're sailing on, which was the limit of most explorations. Like once you ran out of fresh water at that halfway point, you had to turn around or you had to go for broke. If you could, you know, the, the explorations would have gone on much, much longer. And they would have gotten to, you know, the, the world would have been explored much, much sooner with without it. And that's just one example. Sorry, I ramble. Who no. else got some of them? What? Well, let's talk about the edges of the earth. Well, the He's ed- talking. 
Oh, right here. Oh, okay. Sorry. Let, let's talk about the edges. Like, there's certain points, obviously, that we're not allowed to um, sail. But right. um, on a flat earth, you're obviously going to run into the edge. You know, um, so... Why don't you fall off? Yeah, like, obviously... Yeah, what's preventing us from falling over? Oh, my God. All right. First off, don't watch the Thor movies, all right? Asgard did us no favors. There's no such thing as a cosmic waterfall. No. If you're sailing or taking a boat or whatever, um, you are going to just run. And no matter what direction you go, you're going to run into the Antarctic coastline. Plain and simple. Uh, at the Antarctic coastline, again, 200 feet. You can get wonderful pictures of this online. 200 feet of ice, pretty much straight up. It's not exactly like the Game of Thrones. That's higher. But Game of Thrones isn't real, so that's, that's fine. Um, there are some coastlines where you can have your picture taken with penguins at the beach. But yeah, you're not, you're not going anywhere when it comes to the boat. What's more interesting about Antarctica, though, is the Antarctic Treaty, which, again, I don't think they even talked about in the, in the documentary because they hated us, which is the Antarctic Treaty, which was put into place in 1959, right after NASA was founded, by the way. Don't think there was a coincidence there. This, in fact, was the same year the Van Allen radiation belts were discovered. Van Allen, the upper edge and outer edge were sealed off simultaneously. The Outer Edge, the, the Antarctic Treaty says that you as a country, as a corporation, can never go down there and set up shop ever for any reason what, whatsoever. And it doesn't matter how big and, and powerful you are. And you're thinking, that doesn't mean anything. It's like, okay, first off, it's the only unbroken treaty in the history of treaties, right? And it's not only is it unbroken, no one's even challenged it, and it's not even up for review until 2041. And that was set back a long, long time ago. And the second thing is that not only are you not allowed to break, break the treaty, you're not even allowed to talk about it. That's the part that blew me away. That was one of my, my dis deciding moments. It's like, okay, I call BS on that. Because this world runs on greed and power and money. That's what we do. That's why we conquer things. That's why we, we do the horrible things that we do. It's because of greed and power and money. If we wanted to frack in your backyard tomorrow... We could make that happen. It happens in the United States all the time. We just throw briefcases of money at you, and then we go in, or maybe we don't. Maybe we just go into your neighbor's place. And yet, the biggest oil companies in the world, you know, the, the companies with the huge amount of, of liquid resources, they're not even allowed to talk about it. So if I was the head of, imagine this. Let's say you are the head of Exxon, for example, and ExxonMobil. Not only are you not allowed to go down to Antarctica and, and take out some of the oil and natural gas and stuff like there, why aren't you running a full page ad in every newspaper since, I don't know, since 1970? What, you know, saying how great, how many jobs we could do, how much money we could make. It's one of the few conspiracies ever that's bigger than money. And, and again, we, we were, it, Admiral Byrd's wonderful interview where he says, oh yeah, we found oil, we found a mountain range made out of coal, uranium and minerals. We're going to be down there fighting over this place for the next hundred years. And then two years later, everyone goes off the ice at the same time and they put a big chain link on it. And it's like, it's like, what the hell did you find down there? Frost giants? What the hell? I mean, the place was, a, I've never seen anything like it, but it was done so quietly that everyone missed it. But again, no one's even allowed to talk about it. So you, at head of ExxonMobil, let's say you get a great idea, you send an email. It's like, yeah, I think we should really think about Antarctic exploration. All of a sudden you get a call from, I don't know, DOD. They swing by and say, yeah. So, you know, in the, the interest of national security, you don't get to do anything. And that's it. And, and, they, and they remind you. It's like, don't do it. And, and whoever's going to replace you as CEO, tell him not to do it either. Or we're going to have to make another phone call. There you go. So I don't, know where I, I don't even remember what the initial question was. <laughs> he said the edge. He was speaking on the edge. Oh but, yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Again, I yeah, the edge. Yeah, the the edge. The edge is locked down. You can go there. You want to spend? I think what was the tour package right now? Fifteen grand. One of the most expensive destinations in the world. You can go down there. You, you can pay the money and have your picture. Wear the orange survival suit. And have your picture taken with penguins. You can ride around the little rafts and, and maybe even go to what they call the, the South Pole and have your picture taken next to the silverly orby thing, which some people do. But that's it. That's all you can do. Anything you want to you wanna take off and head off in the Thule's on your own? Nope. You have to file so many permits and it costs so much money. The whole place just screams go away. 
is is a political nightmare down there. By the way, it's the only piece of real estate, and it's not a small piece of real estate, even by mainstream science standpoint. It's the only piece of real estate in the world that's not owned by anyone. Is that possible? We have people fighting over real estate, oh, since the dawn of forever, and that place, no one owns it? Come on. Don't don't give me that environmental stuff either, because the treaty was put in well, place. Well, got the ban on eating. Felipe, All right. Felipe, you. So, who, who else? I just had a question on like so, basically how how is you, so you're saying that Antarctica is the only edge? It's the it's the outer marker. So if you were going, yeah, if you want to travel south, isn't even a word anymore. But we'll just use south because we have no other word for it. If you go out outwards, eventually you're going to run into Antarctica. Now remember though. The Antarctic coastline is just the beginning of the edge. The, whatever the edge so is. So that would where Amelia Earhart ended up? No, no, no. Oh, great, great, quest, great question, by the way. No, Amelia Earhart, God bless her. travel around the world and shit. Yeah, God, God bless her soul. Um, the first female solo pilot to try to circle the world. The problem she ran into, yeah, it was sad was that she was traveling south of well outside of the equator in which case her maps would have been wrong her maps wouldn't have been so eventually what I, we figure happened was why not right she was supposed to go to you know she was using islands as jump points and she was supposed to be at a certain island and the map was you know it was it was further than she thought it was going to be because it's not a globe and she was all you know flying going uh there's no island here and she keeps flying and flying and then finally she ran out of fuel and probably had a ditch somewhere which is unfortunate so. I have, all right who else yeah, uh, don't be shy yeah. don't bite can we give one oh, to yeah. her I, I do have a question so no i don't think so <laughs> <All right>. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine no what do you got <laughs> So mainstream science teaches us that the moon is what causes the, the tides, or at least that's what I've learned since I was a child, and that's what uh -huh. I've or, or have believed for, for so long. Um, sure. I'm just trying to understand where that concept, you know, falls within. Okay. So, now, it's now not who's, that beautiful, who's that beautiful young lady speaking? Who is that? Sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> is this like a party line type deal? Are we? Are we? Girl six six. No. No. All right, all right, all right. I am not getting naked for this call. I'm just saying. All right. So. All right. So here's the deal with here's the deal with the moon because lots of people. Well, actually, actually, not that many people have asked. All right. What causes the tides and does the moon have anything to do with it? Uh, let's answer it in reverse order. The moon, the last thing you would do if you were going to build some sort of domed structure with tiny little things inside it, one being the sun and being the moon, is turn the moon into some massive directional gravity machine. Oh my God, what a nightmare to, to try to maintain that. To, you wouldn't want to do that. Because we don't we don't do that in in our simulations anyway, and and, and how we do it. The moon just flies around. It's remember if this everything in the sky is just a clock system, the moon is just part of it too. Now the tides come and go with you know with the phases of the moon, but as far as controlling the tides, you would do that no differently than you do anything else. Meaning, the gravity engine that's inside this place, you would use that to control the, the tides. Remember, oh, sorry, I didn't get back to the gravity question. This, this will circle back to the, one of the earlier things, which is, remember, science can't tell you what gravity is. It can only tell you what gravity does. Science says that gravity is some magical molecular force that pulls things to the center of a sphere. We just say that gravity is a magical molecular for, force that pulls things straight down. That's all it is. So using that same force, if it can be manipulated Meaning if it's artificial like everything else, you can use it to control the tides very easy. So no, the moon has nothing to do with it. It's just, it's not a coincidence. It's just, again, it's just a clock system. The moon is part of the, the tidal uh, designator, for lack of a better term. You know, you can, you can set your watch by it, literally. And it's like, oh yeah, the moon's here. The tide's going to be here. Yeah. The moon doesn't have to control the tides. It's just kind of a little alarm system to let you know when it's going to happen. 
that help kind of? That helps for you? Yes. Sort of. Okay, so I have a question about the moon and the sun being in yeah. the sky together at the same time. Yeah. And and I can't, honestly can't remember if that's indicative of that proves the flat earth or proves the globe earth. Uh, no, and I don't argue with anyone in our community that goes down that road because it's one of those childhood things that always throws everybody. You're in the playground and you see the sun and turn around, you'll see the moon and you're trying to figure it out. And of course, since you're not taught astronomy when you're young, you're like just going, that's weird, but whatever, you know, where's my candy bar type thing. Um, when it comes to, no, no, it's not indicative of it. There's people that will say, you know, the, I've still got people. Okay. There are still people out there a lot from some very, very smart people that are 3d oriented, big into geometry who will swear up and down. In fact, I had a military guy on my thing, um, three or four weeks ago that swears that using sun, I mean, he had, but he had a, that using the sun, plotting the angle of the sun, you could prove a flat earth. The problem is, is that 95, 97% of the population doesn't really do 3D thinking like that. So could it be, um, could it be, yeah, indicative of a flat world? Yeah, sure, maybe, but it, if it doesn't, I, I work with the masses. So if, if whatever I, if whatever I have throw out there, it does not resonate with the general public, it's like, that's eh, a push. I, I don't even, I, I don't generally touch it. So my, my question is obviously, you know, we have a protective layer over the earth, whether it's flat or spear. Right. If it was a flat earth, what would protect the core from like meteors and, and you know, the force of gravity and, and, and all the stuff that floats around in space? Ah, all right. Um, how, which way should I answer this first? Um, let's let's start with the first part of your question, which was the whole protective layer. Um, I had a, there was a woman that was doing uh, an interview that I just listened to this morning, and she said something very interesting. She was talking about how, if you guys know physics at all, she goes, "Gas can't exist on its own without a container." And it was about as simple as explanation. Let's go with that part first, then we'll get into the whole asteroids core okay. kind of thing. Um, which is gas can't exist without a container, meaning we're breathing in, what you guys are breathing in right now is 80% nitrogen and a little bit of oxygen. If you guys know any, any, any scuba divers, they'll tell you about the same thing. Um, but what's weird is next to a vacuum, that's not possible. Meaning uh, everyone knows when you blow up a balloon, you hold it in your hand, you let it go, Every time it's going to go sailing off, right? That's because the pressures try to equalize. So the more pressure inside the balloon, it's going to take off. And if you made a gas chamber or, or a vacuum chamber above you, in, in the second floor above you, and you made a valve and you popped it, the air would instantly equalize. It's not like the movies, by the way. It's not every science fiction movie usually gets it wrong. <laughs> it's like, oh my God, there's, there's only, there's a hole in the hole. We only got two minutes of air left. Get the duct tape. No, it's not like that. It's instant. The aliens, Ripley at the end of Aliens, she's dead. Little girl's dead and soldier's dead. They're all dead. It, it, nobody's climbing out of anything. So if gravity couldn't keep the air in your room instead of going upstairs, why, when you go outside, is our atmosphere still here? It's the exact same, it's the exact same gravity. That is, it is one of the the most fundamental things I throw at people all day long, which is it's like gravity pressure cannot exist next to no pressure without some sort of barrier. It never, ever, ever, ever happens. Um, when it comes to the lower things in the ground, you're talking about the core of the earth and or meteors. First off, when it comes to meteors, somebody find me a video of any meteor landing anywhere, not after it's landed, landing. We've got 6 billion smartphones out there. No one's taking pictures of any meteors hitting anything, whether it's on water, whether it's on land. Oh yeah, someone will show up to a crater after the fact. I have, why, with all the people out in boats, why have we never seen a meteor hit the water and cause some little minor tsunami? Not saying that meteors don't exist. I'm saying they're pretty rare, meaning they're, they're unusually rare. I mean, yes, there's that big one out in what, New Mexico or Arizona? I think it's Arizona or is it New Mexico? A big crater, I gotta look that up. Or the whole Gulf of Mexico, Mexico was supposedly a giant meteor shot. 
whatever, not necessarily buying it. I think that, that again, meteors and, and things are part of the sky system. Every once in a while, something gets close. But again, no population centers. Nothing's ever hit any town anywhere, even in 2020. Doesn't, you know, we have meteor well, showers. I mean, there's, there's the meteor belt and all that stuff. Oh, like, yeah, supposedly. But when it comes I mean, to space. Supposedly, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, who says, okay, two more things for you. One, who said there was space to begin with, right? You know, when it comes to space, who, who said there was space? You know, the U.S. military? Those guys? Yeah, they never lie to you about anything. You know, when, when it comes to, when you're in a planetarium, and I know you, uh, everyone here is super, super young, you've never been in a planetarium ever. When you go to a planetarium, you look up in the sky. Again, it's not the sky, it's just a ceiling. It's like, oh, here's the moon. Does it look spherical? Yes, it does. Do all the planets look spherical? Yes, they do. Can you land on them? No, you can't. Why not? Because you're just looking at something on the ceiling. Who's to say when you don't walk out of there that you're not just in a much, much bigger planetarium? They're the only, the only people that have ever claimed to have seen anything in space has been NASA. And everyone else is just taking pictures and trying to make up what they're seeing. When it comes to the core of the Earth, what you're talking about, core of the Earth is one of my favorite things ever, which is people say, well, how deep is the flat Earth? How far down can you go? And it's like, I don't know. How, flat, how far down can you go in the globe? Deep is so if, if it's a globe, right, the, the core of the Earth is 4,000 miles down. And we've all seen the pretty, pretty illustrations, right? It goes red and orange and yellow and white, you know, these perfect th thousand mile bands. The deepest hole uh, ever drilled. Well, you'd think it'd be at least 2,000 miles, 1,000 miles, 100 miles, 10. The deepest hole ever drilled is eight miles. Science cannot drill. And they tried for decades. It was the Russians and the Germans. They tried forever to try to get past eight miles. So when somebody tells me what the core of the earth looks like, it's like, what are you talking about? The deepest hole ever drilled because is eight miles. they hit iron, though. The what? When they get to a certain point in the core, they hit iron. No, 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 no. That's what they say is at the core. But you're talking about eight miles down. That's not even past, even if you believe mainstream science, not even past the, the, the shell. Meaning there's nothing, yeah. again, if you can't get past eight miles, how can you tell me what the next 3,900 are? In fact, in small print and wiki, you can look it up and science will tell you. It says, oh, yeah, we have no idea what's down there. We're just we're just extrapolating from volcanoes. We don't know. It's like okay, that's what so I'm saying. So as far as tectonic, whatever you call that, tectonic, tectonics, uh, tectonic movement and stuff yeah. like that. Like, I mean, oh yeah, there can be plates. By the way, the plates are just put on a flat surface. Do I think there's plate tectonics? Yes, I do. Do I think there's plates? Yeah, sure. Why not? There's earthquakes all over the place, but the plate tectonics don't have to be on a globe to work. They can be on a flat world and there still can be stresses. Of course, it's still going to be artificial and you can, you know, make earthquakes happen here and there, but the plate tectonics work just fine on a flat world. So Timmy had a good, um, uh, Timmy. What are you eating? What are you, what are you eating? Cheese and crackers. Cheese and crackers and, and oh, okay. crudite. So, <laughs> so Timmy right. brought up a, a subject to me where he was explained to me where it was like, well, why wouldn't you question it? Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, well, how can you question something that you're learning from? So when I learned how to read, I learned how to read. Why would you question it? You know, when my parents told me, don't go there. I didn't question it, you know, because obviously I shouldn't go there, you know. So it's like, it's like, so when, so when he, when I bring up stuff, he goes, oh, well, why wouldn't you question that? I'm like, well, why would I question something that, that makes complete total sense and is on point with everything that I've learned Can I respond to that so one? far? <laughs> yeah, no, hold on, hold on. You know, Here we go. You know, hold on, you know, so, so, so far. So it's like, so when I think of the human, the, you know, the, how we naturally question something, there right. has to be a red flag, you know? Like when someone, I don't know, when your significant other asks you, when are you coming home? <laughs> you know, I'm like, ask me that. Why would you ask me, when am I coming home? You know, right. that's like, that's, yeah, yeah, that's that, I would question, free. I would question that. <laughs> like, why would my significant other asked me why, when am I coming home when they know what time I get out of work. They know how long it All takes right, me to get personal. I don't, no, 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 no. <laughs> it, it takes 
a certain situation to question something. So when I, Timmy's telling me, why didn't you question your teachers when they were telling you about science? I'm like, why would I? No, no, you wouldn't. You absolutely, you're absolutely right. You wouldn't. As children, we are told, you know, to, to respect authority and believe, you know, the, the teachers can do no wrong. The news can do no wrong. The government is always there to help you and, and so on and so on. And some reinforcement is automatic. You don't have to tell them. So like great example would be the American flag. You grow up, the American flags in the corner, you stand up for, I don't know how many, a couple of years and say a pledge of allegiance. Right. But most people don't understand that right below that in most cases is the globe. It's just the toy globe sitting there. And people don't understand how subtle reinforcement can be. If you're looking at the American flag in the corner of your classroom for 12 years, oh, there it is. Oh, uh, yeah, very, very nice. Wait a minute, who owns that? Oh, I know, I know. <laughs> very nice, yeah. Oh, by the way, once, once you get into this, if you get into this bad enough, every movie you watch, every television series you watch, there will be globes in frame I am so hyper aware of it now that it's like, okay, I get it. The Globes may be in that professor's, you know, office, but why is it in the police detective's office or the police captain's or the doctor's office? It's everywhere. It's every freaking everywhere. They've, there's hidden producers out there. I guarantee it. But sorry, back to the point. So the American flags in your classroom for years, when you graduate from high school, we won't even get into university. There's a lot of people that will join the military just based on that subtle reinforcement of the flag. It's like, yeah, I'm going to fight for that. And, you know, I don't have anything else to do. So they, they will go do that. But the globe, that's also been sitting there for 12 years. And people just freaking lose it when they first hear about this. I mean, it's so, so polarizing. There's a great quote that I put in um, the description box of every video I make. It's from uh, George Orwell, you know, the guy that wrote 1984. And in it, he says, and remember, he wrote this back in 1946, and he was not a flat earther, but he was talking about how people believe anything that science tells them. If you're wearing a light white lab coat and you put your stamp on it, oh yeah, the public's like, he's smarter than I am, must be true. Okay, so he said that you, you ask anyone on the street, you ask anyone how they know the world is a globe, and their first response, first response always is, what are you talking about? We know it's a globe. It's a given. It's a no, it is known, Game of Thrones, right? It's known. It's, it is. And then you say, how do you know? And they start getting angry. And that's what he wrote. And what was interesting about that was, remember, he wrote this in 1946, right? How did everybody in the, NASA wasn't even founded until 1958. How did everyone in the world know in 1946 that it was a globe? It's not that they knew. It's they I'll grab one. What? What happened? I am looking at a ceiling. Dude, are you trying to hide oh, no, from your coworkers? Are you I'm, trying I'm to do this working. while you're working? Yeah, oh. I'm working right now. I, yeah, well, I'd question, question that statement, but go ahead. Felipe, <laughs> put it on. No, I'm not really doing much. But um, it just it, it came down to mathematics, though, because I mean, we 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 didn't really get into astronomers like they were right. like you know. Right, right, right. Yeah, this, the, you're absolutely right. The sticks and shadows argument, which is they came up with the, the whole globe thing, but it was based on assumed mathematics, meaning they said, well, if the sun is this big and this far away, then and the shadows do this, then it must be it must be a sphere. However, and scientists will be the first one to tell you this. The sticks and shadows argument also works if the object is really, really close and really, really small. It's all relative. So if the sun, yeah, is 93 million miles away and 400,000 miles across, whatever it is, I don't care, then the sticks and shadows do this. But if the sun is less than 50 miles wide and only 3,000 miles up, it does the exact same thing. Same, same thing would be a, a great equivalent would be your, any video game you play. Any video game with a sun in the sky, right? You have no idea how big that sun is. You have no idea how far away it is. You just equate it to what our sun supposedly is. So it's, oh, it's got to be far and it's got to be really, really big. No, it's not. But you don't know that. But human beings have a notorious ability to fall for illusions, which is why magic tricks in Vegas do so well with us. Um, a great example, and you guys have probably all run into this. If you're ever driving in a car and you're, you're doing stop and go traffic, and then all of a sudden the car next to you is moving but you don't know if he's moving or if you let your foot off the brake accidentally, or if you're in a train and you don't know if the train next to you is moving or you're moving. 
um, that is that is an inherent human visual weakness. We don't know. We are so easily duped. No different than um, if you're ever watching a movie or a television show and you're watching a roller coaster first person and you get a little queasy. Some people get queasy watching that. How? How is that even possible? You're not on, the, on that roller coaster. Mr. Sergeant. Um, yes. <laughs> how, can I, how can I explain this? Because um, like when Timmy told me about it, I'm like, okay, let's say that the world is flat. How does sure. it change anything? What what different? By the way, that means by it's already sinking into your head. If you made that statement, it means it's already starting to bug you. The uh, what is it? What does it mean? Who cares, right? I my my wife doesn't talk to me. My kids hate me. I gotta go to my stupid job in the morning. What does it matter, right? It doesn't matter until you start believing it. Until if, if if you don't if you're not into it at all, it's not gonna make a damn bit of difference to you. We won't. It goes to my second. Oh, that's coming. Oh, what? It goes into my second question. That's coming. Okay, but once you start believing it, even for a little bit, it starts changing your your perspective on uh on a lot of things. But the biggest one being who you are. Yeah. Meaning, are we okay? Then we're not an accident. Well, I we're here. Is, is like are we seriously why are not people like freaking out about that we're in a cage um well some people do a small percentage do um they they've told me that they get a little claustrophobic you know you're t you're changing the universe into a basically a giant studio apartment yeah, but it's a really nice studio apartment it's really big i mean it's it but yeah but which is by the way why 30 percent of even our community don't like the dome it's not that they don't believe in it they just don't like it because it's like, man, don't fence me in. It's all Captain Bringdown and whatever. You know, they're all they're mostly very creative types, which is fine. I get that. But when it comes to, does it change anything? Yeah, it does. Um, but it hits people differently. Um, so like, for example, I kind of equate it to let, and sorry, you're not adopted, right? No. Okay, good. Well, no, I, ha I have to ask that. So it's no, it's not an insult. I'm just saying it's like telling someone, you'll get it in a second. It, if it's like telling someone who's like, say, 30 years old, it's like, oh, yeah, by the way, I'm pretty sure you're adopted. And I've got proof. I've got papers right here. Well, your response, what's going to be? It's like, get out of here. BS. No way. No way. You're just going to, you're going to push it off, push it off, push off. And the second, though, you start leaning that way, even a little bit. It's like a ripple through time. And you start revisiting every single conversation you had with your parents. It's like, wait, who was that other family? Why do they keep visiting? What the hell? And, and then just freaks you out. So, but does it change things? Yeah, it does. The, the biggest thing it changes is that it gives you a different perspective on the meaning. The, the big thing everyone goes through, it's like, why are we here? Why am I here? What's the purpose of, of life? You know, we all ask it as kids and then we kind of dismiss it because we can't solve it. This doesn't answer it necessarily, but it gets you way closer to it. Meaning it confirms, you know, again, I'm not picking on a religion, but there's a lot of people in, in the religious world that latched onto this because it gave them more of a confirmation than they ever had before. And for a lot of them, you know, meanings, everything. It's like, wait, I'm, I'm here for a reason. I'm, I'm, there's a purpose. I don't know what that purpose is, but by God, I'm in it. You know, it's like, you're, you're in the game now. You're in the, whatever the arena is. And it affects people very deeply in some cases. Yeah, I, I would have to say that's one of the biggest issues that I've had with Timmy, uh, Tim, Timbo, Timbalina. And I like, it's... <laughs> Oh. Is that <laughs> give him another beer? <laughs> no, give him another beer. He'll be fine. The thing is, is that when he all I ask is, and then he asks me for the same thing, it's just proof. 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 You know, ah. like mm -hmm. let me and let me just get to it. Like, let's just say that this was a court case. Yeah. And we're bringing it up to the Supreme Court, right? Right. And I'm trying to argue that the world is flat right there's yep. have no one that i can bring up to uh an eyewitness or anyone that i can bring up uh to talk about it someone who's been there someone is like i can't i can only just say that this is how i feel and this is what i believe in 
Ah, all right. Then this is a, a flatty, and then a globy. Yes, I get it. Can show uh, proof based on what uh, society has accepted with pictures and and all that. Which I I I, I get it. Oh, it's all fake. It's CGI. It's like it's like I'm like, but why don't you have that fake stuff? Why don't you have that fake CGI? Why don't you have all that? Like at least something like like an inch or someone who's been to the edge that recorded it and then they were like ransacked by the fbi or some shit you know like but like this well yeah but how how's that person gonna who there's a great line from a movie uh three days of the condor with robert redford where he was exposing a cia versus cia crime and he had written all this stuff down and he gave it to the new york times right and his section chief who caught him on the street you know, he, he, he goes, yeah, I gave it to the New York Times. You're all going down. And he said, really? How do you know they're going to publish it? And he goes, they'll publish it. And he goes, really? How do you know? Which meant that they already, you know, the, the media. Look, if, if you were an astronaut, you give, I'll, I'll get back to your proofs here in a second. If you were an astronaut and you wanted to break rank and spill the beans, I'm just asking you right now. Who would you go to exactly? Who do you trust in the media enough to go to, enough that you're willing to risk everything to get it out? You go to CNN, you call up you know, Fox or Newsmax or Russia Today. Who, who do you call? Could you even call American media yeah, to do it? Fox. I'm like, <laughs> but. Oh, yeah. By the way, to, to anyone, I, I usually ask this to people if, if we get to this far, uh, which is people that don't believe in fake news. I say, okay, fine, resolve these two statements. Everything that CNN is absolutely true and everything that Fox News is ab says is absolutely true. What I resolve both of them because I, I, depending on who you are. Uh, what I think that people should do is that they should always w listen to both sides. And oh, yeah, both I agree. Because when you listen to just one side, you just start to believe in it and then they start painting this picture mm -hmm. and, yeah. and, and you don't see the other side or what they thought about it. So I always think that it's very important to watch. I, I, I agree. I agree wholeheartedly. Timmy is very, very one-sided. What? <laughs> one-sided. How okay. can you say you don't He tells you, wake up. <laughs> wake okay, up. let me, can, I, let me give you. Like I said nope. to him, we were all, we all grew up listening and learning the same stuff in school. Mm -hmm. We are on the same side at one point. So you should be questioning the fact that I'm turning away from it and questioning what we're we're getting taught, and you should be like, you know what? He's my friend. I actually know him. I actually trust him. <laughs> Why? Let me. Not like, it nice. makes more sense that I I should listen to what he's saying as, as opposed to somebody I have no idea who's teaching us this stuff and just getting told a bunch of bullshit. No, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> right. that makes sense. <laughs> because one, I know you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, he personal again. All right, well. All right, let me let me let me do the court case real quick, which is uh, in in a court of law. Could I? And I've said this many times. Could I prove to you, right now, that the Earth is flat? No. However, I can create so much reasonable doubt in the globe, so much that the only place you have left to turn is some sort of flat Earth model. Now, legal people, I don't know if you've got pre-law or law people in, the, in there but they're going to say well you know that's not enough however you're really legal you know full well it is because reasonable doubt wins the day many times every day in every court you can think of reasonable doubt's a very powerful thing um could, yeah you're right i would love to get i have had tons of subject matter experts that have come on and talked from every branch of the military and engineers and pilots and air traffic controllers the whole nine yards i've had all sorts of people but nobody from aerospace because you know, I'm not going to get someone from SpaceX or NASA. Because once they did, I mean, they might as well be on their deathbed. However, again, remember, those people are monitored anyway. So before, you know, anyone that's even remotely this is straight up spy 101. Anyone that's in doubt, you make sure that there is no doubt. You, you monitor everything they do. But my five bullet points, really fast, uh, which would be, um, you know, the, I'll, I'll give you the, the great example. You, if you watch my stuff, so there was a German television team that came to me and said, hey, we got a guy from Georgetown 
physicist would love to talk, you know, love to talk to you about it. I said, okay, you guys are going to talk to each other. We're going to record you because physicists are really boring and dry and they don't talk. They just monosyllable. They're terrible. Except for Neil deGrasse Tyson, which is why he's on stage and doesn't talk to anybody. Come up with your five best points. I go five points. Okay, first, uh, long distance photography. First and foremost, I didn't come up with it. I didn't invent it. Some people just came up with it on their own. That is, you can see way further than you should be able to. Way, way further. You say, well, shouldn't we have been able to figure this out a long time ago? It's like, no. What changed was HD technology. Be for years and years and years, it was like a boat goes over the horizon. It's over the curve. It's over the other side of the hill. We don't have to worry about it best cameras that you could have out there. The resolution wasn't good enough. HD changed that. Now that boat, you can just pull it back into frame and you can keep doing this again and again and again until finally the atmosphere becomes so thick that the boat can't, you know, you're never going to punch through it anyway. Because remember, what we're breathing is only 99%, 99.9% transparent. Second one is gravity versus the vacuum of space, which I talked about earlier, which is gravity loses every single time. So if gravity loses all the time, how the hell are we not in some sort of pressurized system? You, the only way the atmosphere is in here is because we are in some sort of bubble. Third is the moon shadow, which I talked about earlier. The, the moon shadow is too small for the eclipse, way too small, can't be. We say the, the in fact, it's perfect size for us. It's terrible size for mainstream science. Fourth is the moon temperature, which is brand new, which I, I love that one. I didn't come up with it. Some guy said, oh yeah, by the way, it's it, the moon's generating a cold light. And I go, it's cold at night. And I go, no, I'm not as bright as people think I am. And I go, it's like, it's cold at night, right? It's like, no, he's generating a cold light. I go, what do you mean? And he goes, well, if it's 90 degrees in the sun, it's 80 degrees in the shade. We all know that. But when it's 50 degrees in the moonlight, it's 60 to 63 degrees in the moon shade. It's the exact opposite. It's actually warmer in the moon shade. And that only happens you can go to university and find this out. And we actually, there's health products. It's a cool laser. You change the frequency of a laser beam, you can actually generate a colder light, not like make icicles and stuff like that, but you can cool things down. And it's like, wow. And you can point and click, you know, use a point and click infrared thermometer, 20 bucks at a hardware store. Test this all day long. And if you mag take a magnifying glass to it, like magnifying glass to sunlight, you can burn paper. Take a magnifying glass to moonlight, it gets even colder. So freaking weird. Does that prove a flat earth? No. Does it completely destroy the relationship between the sun and the moon? Yeah, all day long. You have to revisit that. Basically, the, the moon is self-illuminated. It's not re reflecting anything. In fact, no scientist, no scientist. I throw that at so many guys, they won't touch it. They, it's like the first time they've ever even heard of it. And we, you know, again, dumb, dumb people figure this stuff out. The common man is probably some nerd in his underwear in Nebraska at 3 a.m. Probably figured this out on his own. It's like, we're probably drunk. Like, hey, it's warmer over here. There's a video on my channel where a guy uses predator vision. Actual, that's actually a real thing now. We didn't really have it in back in the day, but predator vision, you know, the thermal thing. And he was walking around with predator vision, filming things. It's actually, yeah, warmer in the in the moonshed. Hey, last but not least. I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. You have your thing. Last but not least is the radiation, um, Van Allen radiation belt trap question, which has never been defeated. It's kind of like the crane kick in Karate Kid. Can't be defeated. Which is, are the Van Allen radiation belts deadly? Yes or no? Simple question. If yes, if you say yes, they are deadly, then how do the Americans get through them with no shielding multiple times? No shielding at all, as a matter of fact. The only thing that can stop radiation, gold, lead, whole bunch of water, right? It's got to be something really dense. I know there's some other fringe elements. We're talking about elements that people know. The Americans went to the moon and back multiple times through the radiation belts, spent hours and hours inside them. Nobody died. Nobody got radiation poisoning. Nobody even got cancer. There's still five of these guys hobbling around today. And they used aluminum and plastic as shielding. Aluminum and plastic don't stop anything. So, so you flip. You go the other way. It's like, no, no, no. They aren't deadly. And I go, okay. So go to nasa.gov. There's a wonderful video called Orion Trial by Fire where they go into great detail about how they can't send manned tests with their Mars capsules because they haven't solved the radiation problem from the Van Allen belts. And this was done at the end of 2014. So what happened? What, did something changed. They saw they had solved the radiation problem perfectly back in the 60s. Well, how how is that different now? Anyway, those five questions went to the guy at Georgetown. He folded. That was it. He's like, nope, not doing this. We are done. And the Germans went home angry, and the segment never aired. 
but I've still got the original um, conversation with the German television team. I've got on my channel where, you know, where I was talking to him and we were prepping for the whole thing. And, and to be fair, most scientists are very tunneled. You know, they've got their field of study and they don't go outside it. They don't want to go outside it ever because it's not, they'd be like, that's not my field of expertise. So the, I gave him kind of a five point shotgun pattern thing. And there was no way, really no way he was going to do anything. But the guys that were willing to talk about it, yeah, they could only, they could try to answer one or two, but they were never going to get all five. So between those five things, does it prove a flat earth? No, but it leans so heavily into something that looks flat that where else are you going to go? Where else are you going to go with it? And by the way, the, real quick, um, I sent a picture and I know you probably can't pop it up on the screen. I suppose I could share a screen really quick. Can I share a screen? Yeah, do that. Thank you. You can't do it. Right. So here, watch this. So host disabled participant screen sharing. Oh, you, I hate you. I didn't. <laughs> Why'd you do that? Fix that. See, that's why I didn't like her. <laughs> All right, you should. I Googled you, and it says actually in Google that you're not a nice person. That is not true at all. Just ask no, it is true. It is true because this is this is is this Rhode Island? Yes. yes. Yeah. 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 It said I see. It said you not per, not a good person. In fact, they said most of Rhode Island just wasn't filled with with fun people uh, at all. Uh, Rhode Island is an so Mark, quick yeah, question. You should, so you should be able to share now, Mark. To your okay. point, quick, nobody has debunked that yet, correct? Uh wait, what? No, nobody has. All right, so here, so you guys can see. Well, I'll see if I can maximize this or make it bigger, because you won't be able to see all of it because I got a super wide monitor. Oh, see this shot right here? Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. you guys see it pretty clearly. Real quick, so this is this is just a random Apollo 12 shot. It's a beautiful high res shot. I put it. I also put it in your um in the chat so you guys can open it on your machines if you want. It's time and date stamped down below. Ocean of storms. Oh my God! There's so many. Uh, here's here's things that can't be debunked really fast. Ready? And I will not. I will not even include the fact there is not a single photo from the moon with any stars showing whatsoever. You know, and people say, "Oh, it's an exposure setting. Couldn't see the stars." Blah blah. It's like really, you couldn't take a roll of film and change the exposure setting. I don't care. Fine. Everyone knows that if the light source is very very far away, like the sun, the shadows only go in one direction. They all go parallel. Well, that's a problem here because all the shadows are converging in a really really quick manner. All of them, the, the lander, the dish, the guy, the flag, all the shadows are going, they're converging towards that hot spot. The only way that can happen is if the light source was really, really close, which would be, I don't know, 30 yards away in a soundstage. Second thing, I'll only give you three things and I'll switch back. Uh, second thing would be footprints everywhere, right? There's footprints all over the place. This wonderful, perfectly layered, ashy surface that the ash is only about three inches, four inches deep, right? No one ever bothered to use a shovel and dig down further right? Footprints everywhere, but not a single mark underneath that blast crater, you know, or underneath the, the engine, which is underneath the shuttle. That's 10,000 pounds of thrust. Not a single micron of ash is moved out of that place. There should be a splay pattern underneath it. Uh, nope, not there. wonder why. Well, because they just set it there. That's why. Last but not least, let's do engineering. The engineering fans. That dish, that fancy looking high tech dish right there, that's from 1969. That's a VHF transmitter that is hooked up to a car battery. And that thing maybe has a range of, I don't know, 50 miles on a good day. Maybe that's Morse code, right? Even if you use super low frequency, that thing, which wasn't doing, supposedly it was pumping out 10 frames of color video, a second and perfect two-way communication with the base. No. And some people say, oh no, it's actually shooting up at the, at the, um, the orbiter. That's going up. That's you know three thousand miles away. That's like oh, that's even worse. Then you're going after a moving target. What are you lining this thing up with in 1969? It's analog. It's just there for show. All you do is open up a dish and say, oh, we're communicating through that. People just buy it. In the space suit. Uh, how do I stop? Uh, because people are just greedy. Of course, I totally agree. And all your points uh, make total sense. Um, I would have to say. How do I stop sharing? Uh, damn. I don't know. Sorry. Is there a button that says stop sharing? You have a button down the bottom that should say stop sharing your screen. Uh, or, um, 
if you are viewing Mark's stream. Um, yeah, like everything that you're saying makes total sense. And could that be fake? Yes, of course. Anything could be fake. Oh, there it goes. Thank you. So if if that's like perfect example, no one has ever the shadows alone. No one's ever 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 been able to touch the shadows in the moon thing ever ever. So because they don't want to, they don't want to. And it's like, does that fake? Does that does the moon mission being fake prove a flat Earth? No, it does not. But it absolutely screams that something is horribly wrong with space. Because why would you fake space in 1969? Well, probably because you couldn't do it. But why are you faking space now? Why aren't we back at the moon, for example? to do with big with baking space i think it had to do with because there was a race it was a race with china russia and the united states who's going to get there first but and i can tell and i can completely understand why the usa would be like this is just fucking fake it you know? yeah yeah absolutely so but when you got to a certain point our technology would have caught up why didn't we go back i'm like no it's like no i'm not saying that that i never said that that was fake or real I just said that anything could be fake because anything that I had brought up to Tim, whether, like I said, it's like if you were at a court, I mean, like, all right, you, you like, uh, actually wanted to go back to uh, if we had to go to court and we had to prove this. And right. basically, I mean, let, let's just let's just be completely honest. Um, yeah. Video is king. You know what I mean? If you go to the what is king? Kit video. Video or oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I know if it's not, if you don't have video, it never happened. Yeah, I got it right. So I'm like, so I get it. So when I tell, so when I tell Tim about, oh, but, but there's video, there's all this, it, it's all fake, you know. I'm like, I'm like, well, if it's all fake, and then here are court cases where people are getting like murdered, and that's the proof, and they're right. going with it, they're not throwing in the like, well, that could be fabricated. The, the lawyer would never ever get away with that that the video footage is fake so how can very very true you're abs you're absolutely right um there is um a wonderful i made several videos on this earlier in the year which is if it's on if it's in the media it's absolutely true mainstream media would never lie to you ever 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 who's that guy in the court i've never seen him before hey plaid guy who are you <laughs> i'm jose Oh, okay. Hey. So, <laughs> There's only two planets here, me and Diana. Everybody else is Globies. Okay. But we do, so, we do. No, no, no. I, I get you, but which is which is one of our challenges, which is uh yeah, you're absolutely right. If unless you because a lot of people, it's like until unless I've seen footage from the edge or uh rocket footage that has shown me, you know, the, the globe is a flat earth, I'm not, you know. Uh, you know, I'm not going to believe it. It's like, yeah, fine. But if we had that, of course, the jig would be up. That would be it. I mean, the whole thing would just would crack and fall apart. Yeah. So I know it's the big challenge for us. You know, we we have to go with circumstantial most of the time. Yeah, it's like, I think I, I would have, because like when he told me about it, like I said, I was like, oh, interesting. I'm like, what's the feedback? Like, what's the, the proof? What's the, like, what can I sink my teeth into? And there's just happens to be nothing. All right. I mean, I could give you uh, a thing is you're going to be tough. What's your um? What what did you do in school? Physical sciences? No, I uh, dropped out. Oh, you dropped out? Oh, that's all right. I mean, no, hey, join the club. I was thrown out for manufacturing explosives on campus, so it's totally fine. The um, when it is there stuff I could show you that might be convincing. Eh, it varies from person to person. I mean, I've got an experiments playlist, which is massive with all sorts of fun things, but it's up to you to break it down yourself. Meaning all, my job, eh, I'm going to give you my standard spiel, which is my job isn't to convince you or even persuade you. My job is just to get you to look into it yourself, to just plant the seed. And then you go off on your own because everybody's got their own moment. It's one of the most unsatisfying parts of being in the community. It's like, you want to convince, oh, the holidays are the worst. People go home <laughs> and it's with family and it's like, so what are you into, right? And you know, you might as well say the most wor the worst thing ever. It would be better than flat earth. It's like, oh yeah, I'm the flat earth now. It's like, yeah, all the psychiatric ward. You know, people, I mean, seriously, the people have threatened committal. Oh, of, of people that they hate what they, don't hate they all hate they don't hate you. We don't oh, yeah. no, they don't hate you. 
No, no, I, I hear you. I mean, why, why wouldn't you? But at the same time, you're not, again, you're not supposed to convince them. All you're supposed to do is put it in their heads and let them let it rattle around. It's a marble in a freaking paint can. You so, can't get rid of it. It's the, it's there. The research that I've done, I've actually learned that. And I'm like, there's no convincing them. There's no like uh, change in their mind. You can just kind of just like, okay, say your piece and just be respectful on their beliefs because at the end of the day, it's like, it's, and I found myself, it was kind of weird because I'm like, how can you believe in something that no one's ever seen, no one's ever felt or touched? And then I'm like, oh yeah, people believe in God. I'm like, so it's like, which is something they've never seen, never felt, or never touched. They won't right. So I'm like, okay, so I can see how people can follow and believe in but, something. That, Jenny, but that. Jenny, Jenny, do any of you, any of you guys play tennis? No. Sure. Do you guys know the professional tennis circuit at all? No, not that familiar. But yeah, go ahead. Oh no, I I threw a I threw a thing in there for you. Like a perfect example would be a quiet person that got into this. I uh, would be uh, Novak Djokovic, mm -hmm. which he he didn't do an interview like Kyrie Irving or anybody else. He just held up a, a picture, a drawing of the flat Earth that his daughter drew. It's a burning. I'm cooking. <laughs> okay. And, but, and that way he doesn't have to get tortured by it, but he wasn't necessarily there to convince people. He's, you know, he's not being an activist. He's just sharing it every once in a while. The, um, uh, I'll give you a great example of it would be, well, I'm not going to say his name. Eh, hey. Won't matter. I'm not going to say his name. So I met an A-list a celebrity <coughs> who was telling me about how he got into flat earth. And, and I go, I go, yeah, how'd you find out? And he goes, oh, Amy Adams told me at the Oscars um last year and i go really and he goes yeah he goes he goes but she hates it she can't stand flat earth so they were at this party and all the celebs you know we're talking they're whispering about conspiracies and stuff and she walks in and she says no 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 you can put all that other bs to bed she goes let me tell you what my father's into she goes off in this big jag about how her father's into flat earth and during that rant because she hated it so much she drew the attention of all these people it's like oh yeah click 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 you know, they start looking it up because in as producers have told me over the last five years, it doesn't matter whether you love or hate a topic, as long as you're talking about it, you know, Jersey Shore would be a great example. Nobody liked Snooki. They hated her, <laughs> but they loved to hate her. She became the villain. Flat Earth is the villain of all conspiracies right now. So as long as you can get people talking about it, I don't really care. I mean, I've gone on shows where they just despised me. Well, despised the idea. They didn't hate me. And it's like, it's like, fine, we'll, we'll get a percentage of your audience anyway. All you have to do is talk about it and it works. So in this case, look, I mean, anyone's listening or in the future, anyone that's listening to this in your case, I don't know. I don't know if you'll, you may, you may not, or you may just be resigned to like, I'm not dealing with this right now. It may turn out to be the, um, uh, what is it? The seventh man syndrome or eight man syndrome where random people who you don't know who don't solicit with you over here, at least seven people talking about it, eventually you'll look into it yourself. However, in your case, you've already looked into it. So. I find it very interesting that when I do bring it up, um, like they kind of like don't want to touch on the whole alien thing because like my mind just like, well, the dome and before us and they're monitoring us that they're changing the starlight and the galaxy. So, I mean like, so someone who's like maybe in the next state over, um, yeah. there's someone monitoring that sky as well sure. to, to see the stars because I like, mean is that a, a would would you feel better not having someone monitor you I mean come on it, there's so, something reassuring about your parent sitting on the on the couch looking over the top of your newspaper it's not that they're gonna you know be micromanaging you but they want to make sure you don't put a penny in the light socket you know they don't want you to burn anything down so it you know, in some ways, yeah. Could it be, yeah, some people don't like it. It's like, oh man, are we being watched? But at the same time, some people are reassured by it. So let me, right? What? So let me ask you this. Um, a friend of ours that's here right now, yeah. to a pilot and they said, absolutely you can see the curve at 30,000 feet or whatever pilots can fly. Sure, I, I will link. I will link the Neil deGrasse Tyson video. But they refuse to get the pilot on right now. And I'm like, oh, this would be, 
perfect to debate. Uh, hey, look, pi- pilots are, it's kind of strange because I've i got a bunch of pilots on my list. I, in fact, there was a wonderful pilot, a veteran of 25 years at a KLM Airlines um, in the Netherlands. She was benched because she, she said, she goes, yeah, I think it's flat. And the doctors, the company doctors said, you're not going up until you renounce that. And she wouldn't do it. And now she does public speaking things over in Europe about it. But pilots are, are kind of a weird thing because I've had some pilots say that, yeah, they can see the curve. And I've had a whole bunch of other pilots, though, that have said, oh, no, out of the front of the cockpit, it's absolutely flat. And you can see way further than you should. But it, their, their argument is like, yeah, but who are we going to talk to about it? You even, you even hint. Oh, I'll give you a great example. Great example. So I was coming back from a conference in uh, London um, just two years ago. And not even two years ago, a year ago. And I was flying through Iceland. So I was flying Iceland Air. And we land in Seattle and waiting for my bags in, um, in, uh, in the, the thing. And the pilot of that freaking jet came up to me. And he, and he, asked, for, he asked for a selfie. <laughs> and it's like, what? He goes, dude, he goes, I listen to everything you say. Right? And, but he was really quiet about it. You know, it's like, you know, take a selfie. And then walked back to his, his pilot group. And, you know, I'm sure he did not tell them who, who exactly I was. But there's, you know, a bunch that see it for what it is. I have a question. So what would you say to, sorry, what would you say to somebody to say back to that pilot? If they're, like, legit. If, oh, if they say they see the curve, I would, I would say watch this Neil deGrasse Tyson video that's only four minutes long. Where Neil Tyson on stage in front of a whole bunch of people says, even at 130,000 feet, you cannot see it. And planes only cannot see it. Planes only fly at what height? Pretty much forty tops. So it's three three times that height and change. And he says you cannot. He goes basically said no civilian can see the curve. So and I've had people say, well, Neil's wrong. It's like okay, he's the most popular scientist in the world. So I don't know what we're gonna we're gonna back that up with. But no, I mean I treat the pilots no different than the people that are sitting in the back. Bank. In fact, the pilots have a better view out the front. So if they see the see it, no, no, I haven't watched Neil Tyson's thing. That's it. It's done. And or or one more thing, put put the challenge to him. If he's so sure, have him take a picture from the front, put a straight edge up to it, send it to you, send it to me, whatever. If he doesn't want to, if he wants to remain anonymous, again, show me where it is. I have a question. Now there's, um, I guess, challenges out there that people can do for themselves. Uh, to to experiment to see that the world is round. What experiments do you recommend that you can do to to counter counter that 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 how you can tell that the world is actually flat? Okay, so what he's talking about, Mark, is I brought up to him the fact that it's out there. You can look up like the Earth curves are calculated. Now, I mean, like you physically in your backyard, there's things that you can do to tell that the world is round. What can you do to prove that the world is flat on your own? Okay. And let, yeah, let's kind of wrap it up with this because we've been going two hours. Um, and by the way, I'd love a recording of this, an audio, uh, whatever. I'd love a recording of this because um, it's really great. I usually don't talk to this many people simultaneously. I know iPhone up there is not really chiming in much. And I don't know what happened to Kevin and the other guy security guard i think he probably was shooting people (laughs) um okay so the things i recommend for anyone that wants to look into this first and foremost i would do the um the long distance photography thing find anybody with a decent camera even even i don't know what phones have what what their resolution is nowadays but go to any beach whatever it is i don't care body of water can be a freshwater lake as long as it's far away you know whatever object is far away a beach and even if you can't see anything on the horizon and zoom in and see if you can now spot stuff that's, that's, that's there, that wasn't there before. Um, and then figure out if you can, what the distance is. We usually static objects are better like a lighthouse or a building or something out there because then you can go on Google maps and say, oh yeah, by the way, that thing is 11 miles away. It's 15, it's 20, it's 40, it's whatever. Can you still see it? And is it, is it clear? That would be the first thing, you know, find and do it day, night, hot, cold, doesn't really matter. Although cold weather tends to work a little better because you don't have to worry about a lot of atmospheric distortion. The atmosphere is always moving. So it's, you're going to get mixed results depending on what day you go. That's the first thing I would do. Uh, that's, I, I only say that because that's what everyone did 
when when I made the clues is like people just start running to the beaches. It's like I never told anyone to run to the beaches. They just did it instinctively. I don't know why. I'd be at the beach. Can you do it on another land? Like, oh yeah, you yeah you don't have to be at the beach. You can do it from any anything that overlooks. Oh, I mean, if you don't have any water to look over, yeah, you can look down as long as long as it's fairly flat. Again, you can you know look see how far you can see. You you if you want to go up to the top of a hill and shoot something off off in the distance, sure. We've had people do long distance. You know, it's funny the world record photography, world record photography, even not our people, is from peak to peak. It's the farthest you can see is when you're up at high elevations. Why? Because you're not looking through that much atmosphere. It's it's much, much thinner, which, go, of course, goes into the, the question I always get, which is, you guys haven't asked it because you're probably pretty smart, which is, why can't you see Japan from California? Why can't you see Europe from New York? And why can't you see Mount Everest from everywhere? Right? Because it's the tallest thing ever. And that's because, well, it just gets thicker and thicker and thicker. It's no different than why can't you see when you're underwater a whale just fades off into nothing after what 300 yards if that and that's because it's just the water is very very thick you remember you're just breathing in a thin version of water right here other experiments you could try i don't know do the 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 light experiment that's kind of fun cheap 20 bucks get a you know point and click thermometer i'm not gonna i blew out my camera the last time i was doing that so yeah. it's because it's got a laser built into it with the stars and the gas oh can you do anything with the stars yeah I don't know if there's anything good you could do with the stars. You want to do something fun with the stars, though, um, because you do any try, try to do triangulation with the stars, you're just gonna get bored. Um, you want to do something fun with the stars? Find somebody that's got um, military, that's got night vision binoculars or night vision. You have no idea what the hell's flying up there until you get night vision. It's creepy, and it's not. This is not flat Earth. This is a side tangent. Guy in, from Britain says, oh, yeah, at the end of this interview, he goes, you want to see some weird stuff? He goes, get some night vision, start looking up. I go, oh, sounds like a wager. So I grabbed some night vision binoculars, bought them off Amazon, um, night owls, as a matter of fact, made in Russia. And I was looking, and you'd be amazed. The sky is just crawling with stuff, absolutely crawling. You say, well, it's satellites. Yeah, you think it's satellites until they start moving different directions and changing speeds and doing all this other weird stuff. And flying in packs and super super weird so no stars stars not for that but night vision that'd be kind of fun pulling a screen <laughs> oh, the what actually an alien controlling the dome screen. well no 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 i think no i think there's things flying around up there i mean we have airplanes flying around these things are at least twice as high as airplanes though at least and i don't think i what point is they're not all us and they fly silently on top of that anyway um other experiments you could do I mean, what about just, just um, like, so they have an earth curvature calculator. Yeah. And they tell us. Oh, yeah. Here, look, I'll link it for you really fast. Like, this is the easiest way to debunk it. Like, from what I've seen is that they put out there that, okay, so behind a certain amount of miles, you should be behind this amount of feet and you shouldn't see somebody. Yeah. Yeah, so, absolutely. I mean, that is, that is far and away our biggest... Um, that is far and away our biggest thing, which is the, the curvature. You're absolutely right. The curvature calculator, which I put just put the link for you in there. That's probably the best one to use. Um, you you shoot anything long distance. You you punch up the cal calculator, and yes, you're right. Something whatever it is should be on the other side of the hill. It should be gone. And you know when when any scientist comes out, oh, it's a mirage. It's it's uh, it's some sort of refraction. It's like no, no, it's not. HD changed that. Now we can, nothing's inverted, nothing's blurry. We've got time lapse of Chicago over Lake Michigan, 50 miles. Time lapse, 12 hours. Weather comes in, it goes from light to dark. It was, it was close and, you know, the, the resolution was good enough. You could see the cleaning crews going floor by floor at night. Um, how, is, how is that possible? It's, it's not. To wrap this up. Uh, yes. Wrap it ask up. you one last thing is I'm not done what, yet. I'm, oh, wrap we're it done. Up. We're done. I'm like 12 is good. <laughs> I'm like, um, my last question would be what should wait, you... wait, hold that thought for one second. <laughs> I'm gonna go take a piss. I'm gonna take a shot. I know, right? Two hours, you haven't taken a piss. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go ahead. My last question would be Did you take a hit? 
<laughs> no, 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 no. There was a there was a cat scratching on the door. I guess my last question would be. Uh, I just take a hit. <laughs> So our last question, but well, my last question would be, yes, what would be your advice as for the next movement for, for as humans, like what should we do? <laughs> what? I don't understand. The question. <laughs> no, I do. I do. I do. I do. Be as moving moving forward. Be as open minded as possible, yep. and I'm not I'm not I'm not aiming that as you at you. I'm saying yep. that Good. everything has gotten really weird over the last two years. Really weird. I mean, I've I've seen people jump into concepts now that would have never gone into it before, and that is just kind of roll with it. Don't. What what I try to tell people is like like nowadays. Once I got into the whole flat Earth thing. I said, I can't shoot down, I won't shoot down anyone that comes at me with any idea initially. I won't, I won't kill it at face value. You know, if two years ago or five years ago, people have said, oh yeah, I know a guy that swears that Bigfoot had Elvis's baby. I'd be like, whatever, get out of here. Now I'd be like, you know what? I'll give you a couple minutes. What do you got? <laughs> so why, why the hell not? Why not listen to him? I mean, I open up my day saying that we're living in a building. So then, what, what leg do I have to stand on? <laughs> the what? I missed that last line. I'm just saying, I'm like, like in my mind, I'm thinking, I'm like, okay, well, I need to prove this. I need to, I need to know the truth. So it's like, I'm just thinking, I'm like, I'm gonna just book a cruise in the Atlantic, and then when no one's looking, yeah. jump in a fucking dinghy, and then just <laughs> my way out to the fuck and just find out for my damn self, you know? Because no, the, the system this thought you're not going to get that sort of satisfaction you're not going to get instant gratification on this because the the system that was put into place since 1960 has so many layers to it that even if let's let, let's say you were a billionaire right let's and and um you had your own private big you know seven triple seven jet and you had it fully fueled and you got a pilot crazy enough to bypass gps systems and just go for broke just fly straight to Antarctica, ignore the military, ignore everyone that's calling you. Um, even if you made it, again, yeah, you might be able to find something out for yourself, but you're never going to be able to tell anybody. Plus, you're going to have phone calls even before you get there saying, oh, yeah, we will absolutely destroy your entire empire, your assets, your legacy, whatever. I mean, look what they did to... Um, De Niro, when um, Robert De Niro, when they were just when he was going to like um, run the um, the anti-vax the documentary at his film festival, he was going to run it. He was going to run it. And then two calls from a pharmaceutical firm later. It's like no. Look at Oprah when she said, "I'm never going to eat hamburgers again." <laughs> Do you know what happened to her? Do you see what happened to her? The the United States Beef Council got a hold of her and said. Yeah, we will sue you into the ground and you will be a memory before we are done with you. You know, we'll, we will waste your millions in, in court. And she, she backed out. Everyone can be gotten to. And the more at, the system is designed to, even if you had the ability to do what you wanted to do, there are things in place, little negative reinforcements to keep you from doing that. I just remember, Unless you were suicidal. People, people, like somebody. I'm like, a nobody? No one paying attention to me. I'm a nobody. You know, it's like, I can't. Yeah, but how are you going to get the resources to, to go out there? And how do you know where you're going? You got to remember, you have to bypass the military GPS system to start. And you're flying, a, like, we'll say, just say Antarctica. You're, you're going to go across the ice with no markers and no GPS system. You're just going to head out there. And remember, we were looking for it. The United States military, the Navy was looking for it for 40 years, 30 years. He says he's going to go opposite from north. I'm like, if with the compass? The edges, right? With a compass. Yeah, but the problem is once you get out there, again, because the system's designed that way, the compass is going to stop working. It's not going to give you any good bearings. And again, your GPS, you can't use your GPS on your phone. No, but let's just remember that. Poor people. No one's perfect. <laughs> no. Yeah. Poor people, people give in the persuasion <laughs> that people just, people are people at the end of the day. It's like no one's that perfect that they can just keep a secret. 
and just be right on point because I breaking down many men and I'm like it's like it's like you can always just bring that in. <laughs> I'm just saying that that this like even the toughest dude you can make them laugh I guess tickle I don't know. I'm just saying I'm like I'm like I'm like the, we're not fucking robots. It's like we're not robots. People are people and you can you know people make mistakes. People talk. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm not that yeah, but 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 people talk but what what is it what does it accomplish? It doesn't accomplish anything because of the system that he's talking about that's in place. In enlightenment it still has in my opinion still has value. You know, tell, getting people to, I still believe in the hundredth monkey effect. Which, if you guys don't know what that is, I think it applies to, to people as well, which is, um, you know, they, they took, let, let's end with this. Cause I, I fortunately I got to wrap up. I, there's another meetup I got to jump into. Not as cool as yours though, which is, which is, um, <laughs> which is the, the hundredth monkey effect was the United States military after world war two were te- were feeding these monkeys on these Japanese islands, uh, potatoes. And they noticed that the, the monkeys started learning things. They learned how to wash the sand off the potatoes and it tasted better. What was interesting though was once it hit about the hundredth monkey or so, all of a sudden they all learned it simultaneously. And the science will come back and say, no, that's a myth. It's like, no, 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 we didn't make this up. You guys just didn't like the results. And what, what was interesting was not only did they all under, all the islands on that monkey learn it, but all the islands that weren't connected, they learned it simultaneously as well without seeing the others. So I think that human beings could also run into that potentially. I think that we're part of the same system. And I think once enough people get into this, I think that there's a tipping point where it becomes more acceptable to talk about it than not. Plus, I also believe in the event, some weird cataclysmic something cool. I still think that some giant spaceship is going to land somewhere. Yes. But- I have a couple of questions you. quick before. All right, you okay, what? What? Quick. From other people. So, question, do you believe Other people? Are you broadcasting this? That's, 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 I think a lot of friends meaning that, his, meaning his All right, mind. come on, he has to go. A wow. lot of friends that wanted to ask questions but they can uh, so, All right, all right, what? God. And what about the photos of Earth and space? How All fake. Like that? All fake. All CGI's. Um real quick on that the first blue marble shot, which means the full disc Earth and sunlight was taken in 1972 on Apollo 17. And this, again, not secret information. The second one, the second blue marble shot wasn't taken until summer of 2015. 2015. 43 years. And what happened? That was all, all the 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000, 2010, halfway to 2020. No one took a picture of the Earth in the sun. No, it was all these weird angled composite shots. No, and, and again, NASA, we, we know this because Obama was the one that tweeted it and Scott Kelly, the astronaut, wrote the press release on it. But no one, glo- everyone glossed over the fact that that was the second Blue Marble shot. You're telling me with all the space missions, no one took that shot from anywhere ever? Yeah. 43 years? No, statistically impossible. Um, so no. There, and by the way, if you're going to go looking at pictures of the Earth from space, try to find me a picture of a satellite from space. There's probably 10,000 of those things flying around up there. No, don't see anybody. No, no. And by the way, the, the movie Gravity got that part right, which is, remember the, the movie Gravity, Sandra Bullock, where the whole premise was satellites started running into each other and the whole sky started turning into this thing of metal flying around? That would have happened by now. Once a satellite runs into an impact with anything, you would, you would be able to control it. The whole sky would become this death zone, and it never, ever happened. Again, statistically impossible. What else? All right. My, my own personal question is, it's like, okay, so if we're, if, forget the flat earth, if we're on a round, how can we be spinning or everything be spinning at all these speeds, yet we can look at the sun from the beach and tan in it like it's just sitting right there and we're oh, yeah. around it? Or- yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or, or heck, I'll, I'll do one better, um, which is the, the no, there's no parallax. Meaning, and parallax, what that means is um, the earth version is when you're driving down a highway, the mailboxes are going really fast, but the mountains are going by really slow in the distance because the mountains are farther away, right? Well, if you have a star that's four light years away, another star that's 10,000 light years away, and another one that's even further than that, and we're flying supposedly sideways, our solar system's flying at 2 million miles an hour, and has been flying that way for a long, long time, 
why don't the stars start showing parallax? Which means the zodiac, why hasn't that changed in 2000 years? And I don't care if scientists say that, oh no, it's because uh, everything's really, really, really far away and we're not moving that fast in comparison. It's like for 2000 years, no, 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 no. Anything else? It's a great point. Anybody else? Mark, thank you so much. Thanks guys. It was, no, it was, it was great talking with you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you, Diana, of course, iPhone guy, Kevin, the guy, the security <laughs> guy that apparently was shot on duty. And uh, Oh, wait, we didn't answer the last question. All right, so no. Lupe wanted to ask before he could go. He said, do you, believe, <laughs> do you believe in God at all? Yes, yes. As a matter of fact, um, I've just made a rant. I'm going to release it on Tuesday called uh, 2021, the put up or shut up moment which goes into the whole um, health ID system that's being put in place. Is it tied to the mark of the beast? So, yeah. Is he in the driver's seat? The what? In the driver's seat. Is God in the driver's seat? With the whole yes. But did God subcontract out the work for this place? Yeah, maybe. God's a pretty busy guy. Good one. That's a good one. <laughs> okay, so what is the best way to, for me to get you this recording? Because it's going to be too big. Oh, okay. So when you're done... Um, I'm sure it'll record to the side. Um, probably we transfer. Okay. Uh, you, you, you can do two gigs for free. Okay. And um, you don't have to. I, I, you can just send it through we transfer. If not, have somebody strip out the audio and just send it.